Good morning, everyone. All of the participants, please mute yourself. Please mute your mic. Morning. Hello. May I request my participants, please mute your mic. So we will start uh, like in two, three minutes because the due time is 10.30. So let us wait for two, three minutes. Yeah. Hello. We will wait for another five minutes, sir, with your permission. Oh, okay. No problem. Right. How many participants? Uh, participants still now, it's like 62. Uh, 
on average we have uh, gathering like between uh, 250 to 300 oh. What they do? Why yes. is insisting yes. on this? These students nowadays. By participating. You might have seen whether please, uh, please mute everybody. Please mute everybody, Pratusha. Okay, so shall we start? Let yeah. us start. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to session nine of day three. The theme of this session is writing research on and data management. In this session, our esteemed speaker will be talking on the topic research methodology in international relations. I am Dr. Pratish Vibhakar, Assistant Professor of Sociology at Calgotias University. International relations and world politics are two significant and rapidly changing phenomena. The world is increasingly becoming more and more unified with the emerging problems that transcends regional boundaries and parochial national interests. The ongoing pandemic is one example. Such desperate situations of global concerns have not only challenged our traditional way of looking at the global governance system, and cross border relations, but also provided an opportunity to the humankind to examine and re Pratish, sir, you are not audible. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, sir. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to session nine of day three. The theme of this session is writing research and data management. In this session, our esteemed speaker will be talking on the topic research methodology in international relations. I'm Dr. Pratish Vibhakar, Assistant Professor of Sociology at Galgotias University. International relations and world politics are two significant and rapidly changing phenomena. The world is changing, the world is increasingly becoming more and more unified with emergent problems that transcends regional boundaries and parochial national interests. The ongoing pandemic is one such example. Such desperate situations of global concerns have not only challenged our traditional way of looking at the global governance system and cross-border relations, but also provided an opportunity to the humankind to examine and rebuild international relations in a more effective and democratic manner. Therefore, research in the field of international relations have gathered a lot of attraction and interests like never before. In order to accomplish meaningful research in the field of IR, it is important to be aware of new horizons of research methodologies and approaches. Dr. S. Shaji will be delivering the next lecture who endeavors to equip the young scholars with the knowledge of new approaches in the research methodologies in the domain of IR. To introduce Dr. S. Shaji, who is assistant professor in the Department of Political Science, University of Hyderabad. Before joining the University of Hyderabad, he was assistant professor with the Center for Multidisciplinary Development Research and ICSSR Institute at Dharwar, Karnatak. He was also a consultant to UNICEF and Administrative Staff College, India, Hyderabad. Dr. Shaji was invited as guest professor to the Institute of Political and Social Studies, University of Würzburg, Germany. He was 
a SUSI foreign policy fellow at Bard College, New York. He has also presented research papers in international seminars and conferences such as South African Association of Political Studies in Stellenbosch in 2010. Dr. Shaji was deputy coordinator at Center for Advanced Studies, Department of Political Science and coordinator of study in India program, University of Hyderabad. As part of his assignment at study of India program, he has been designing and conducting customized courses on contemporary India for participants from universities in the US and Nordic countries since 2012. His research interests in the international relations includes India's relations with developing states, especially from Afro-Asian region, technology transfer, foreign policy of developing states. He is currently part of an international project at the University of Hyderabad on internationalization and virtual exchange, colon, borderless between EU and Asian countries, Erasmus plus CBHE funded by European Union. Before we begin, I would like to inform, I would like to inform our uh, participant here that uh, this session is being recorded and is simultaneously telecasted on Facebook Live and YouTube. This session is of one hour of which last 15 minutes are dedicated to question and answers if you have any question for the speaker, please use the chat feature of Zoom. You may write down your questions anytime during the lecture. However, we will hold questions until the end of the session. And I will then read questions to uh, Shaji sir as time permits. I will request Professor Shaji if he could provide some references for further reading as that would be beneficial for our participants. That has been requested for, for uh, like in our previous sessions too. Sure. So I would request that. And without taking any more time, may I please welcome Dr. Shaji to deliver his lecture. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair, Dr. Uh, Pratish uh, Dibagar. And uh, good morning, uh, everyone uh, who has been participating in this program for the last uh, two days. And uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Manasi Sinha for inviting me to this prestigious uh, FTP and, uh, and, and also to the university, Calcutta's University, for taking the initiative to uh, hold a workshop on a theme of this uh, great importance. And uh, I was told that uh, there are participants from different disciplines and uh, the, this different areas, uh, mostly from social sciences. Therefore, I'm going to speak on this specific top, topic uh, in, in, a, in a way that would uh, uh, be uh, you know, useful to uh, participants from various social sciences. Uh, broadly, I'm going to talk on methodologies in international relations. Um, this is one of the topics which has attracted a lot of attention within social science research uh, in the recent times. And a uh, lot of debates are centering around uh, the shift which is happening within the discipline uh, towards non-Western experiences and understanding the realities of those uh, regions, which in a way is somewhat new, uh, considering uh, the long uh, trajectory that the discipline uh, had uh, in, in different uh, way. Uh, definitely, IR is, uh, is relatively a new discipline in comparison with other uh, disciplines like uh, economics, sociology, philosophy, and, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, its history is, or, or its history is limited to perhaps one century or something like that. Uh, the disciplinary history uh, begins uh, in the last century, uh, the second decade of the last century, 20th century. And, and to a large extent, the origin of the discipline 
can be traced to the developments of that particular period, like First World War, for, for instance. Therefore, uh, the emergence of discipline and its uh, dependence on other established uh, disciplines of that particular time to a large extent shape the me methodological trajectories of the discipline. IR being uh, a discipline which emerged out of broadly uh, history and, uh, and, and political science uh, settings uh, began to take methodological uh, root as a reflection of methodological frameworks and approaches that, that were there in those uh, disciplines. Uh, some of the normative concerns of those disciplines began to shape the, the philosophical orientation of the discipline for a very long period of time. In a way, IR's existence to a large extent depended on the strength of those established disciplines like uh, you know, political science or history and, and so on and so forth. Second World War was actually a watershed in the, uh, in the, in the evolution of discipline. To a large extent, the methodological turn uh, away from the initial days began to come up after the Second World War. And to a large extent, such a turn was a reflective of the overall methodological debates which were happening at that point in time around behavioralism. So to, <clears throat> in, in a way, the behavioral uh, approaches began to dominate uh, IR methodologies um, in, a, in a significant fashion in, in those uh, times. Uh, attempts were made to connect IR, IR's overall uh, you know, scheme of inquiries uh, on par with uh, the behavioralist ideas, uh, which, which in turn was informed by natural science practices. Uh, if you look at some of the core the, uh, sub uh, core this, uh, theoretical debates of that particular time, like realism, for instance, was reflecting on those behavioral practices. Uh, the, the prominent scholars like Morgendo, for instance, uh, was trying to project international relations uh, as um, as 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 an area that captures the essence of objective realities of state politics. So, in that sense, the so-called objective realities were these were the core of uh, IR methodologies at, at that point in time. Uh, in other words, uh, the researcher and the uh, research team uh, were considered to be two different kind of entities. In other words, the idea was that there is a world outside or world out there to be understood and explained. So there was a clear cut gulf between, um, you know, the researchers positions or the researchers perspectives and the realities which was there in the uh, system. So what I'm trying to suggest is that many of the uh, IR methodologies of that particular time were trying to project uh, so-called objective, uh, you know, um, trajectories and objective uh, realities uh, in international relations. And, and to a large extent, uh, the, the methods mostly based on um, quantitative techniques and, and methods uh, began to inform such kind of uh, objective, so-called objective inquiries in the uh, discipline. A, a wide variety of uh, methods began to come up uh, under the umbrella of you know, behavior, behavioralism, positivist uh, schools of thought at that point in time. Uh, what we uh, generally uh, see uh, in, in different theories of IR, like 
game theory, for instance. And they were trying to interpret uh, the, the, the realities, the, the, the realities out there as something very objective. And to a large extent, such realities were also uh, shaped by the experiences of certain specific regions. For instance, the, the European American uh, realities and experiences were informing the core of methodological debates. Um, one of the positive things perhaps came out of uh, the, the behaviorist, behavioralist ad, um, ad, adaptation uh, into IR methodologies was the origin of I, or, or, or the development of IR as a distinct social science. So the behavioralism's contribution in that sense was a positive in certain ways. I have developed as, as, a, as an independent discipline and it, it began to uh, you know, get certain kind of visibility within academia, social science academia, especially uh, in the Western world. And, and in that sense, it, it had certain kind of positive uh, uh, you know, contribution. But the but the issue uh, that often uh, you know cited as uh, as far as behavior behavioralism was concerned is it did not give much importance to ideas and uh, themes uh, beyond uh, state centrality uh, within the discipline and also the uh, the depiction of reality. Or, or the analysis of reality in a specific fashion. To a <clears throat> large extent, the experiences outside of the Western world was not taken into consideration uh, in, in the uh, larger methodological debates. Another issue that we need to, uh, you know, uh, need to uh, pinpoint when we talk about uh, uh, behavioralism and uh, its, its uh, engagement with IRS, uh, to, to a large extent, the, the debates in IR, though we talk about methodologies, uh, were influenced by the larger debates on theory. Somewhere the, theor the debates on theory or theories, uh, uh, you know, overshadowed the debates on methodology. Uh, IR's great debates are a uh, reflection of the, uh, the, 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 the debates on uh, different theories and, and the binaries associated with uh, uh, theoretical uh, positions within the discipline. So what I'm trying to suggest is that those, those obsession with uh, uh, theories and, and theories, uh, you know, um, engagement with each other somewhere overshadowed the, the debates on methodology. But one can also say that the debates on theories uh, contributed indirectly to the debates on methodology. So <clears throat> behavioralism in that sense at that point in time was also contribute to, con contributing to uh, the, the, the larger theoretical debates, the traditional theory theories versus scientific theories. Therefore, there was also discussion around what sort of methods, methodologies, and methods that the discipline should pursue in order to understand uh, the world realities. So that was that was the trend uh, within the discipline for a very long period of time. But uh, in 1970s and and 80s, uh, there, there was actually a shift towards uh, you know, critiquing some of these uh, methodological uh, of, uh, obsessions of the discipline with uh, uh, behavioralism. Of course, in 1970s, there was a huge uh, debate on, on uh, some aspects pertaining to realism in a way, a kind of reemergence of realism in new format, like uh, neorealism, which, which, which was trying to bring back so-called, uh, you know, the objective research in international uh, relations, uh, a kind of obsession with the structure and 
and uh, the system of states and so on and so forth. What I'm trying to suggest is that IR for a very long period of time was under the influence of these, uh, you know, uh, traditional and behavioralist theories. And only in 1970s and, and 80s, there were certain kinds of attempts to critique the, uh, the, the foundations of IR theories and methodologies. And this is where the, the critical theories within international relations began to come up, which in turn had a, a huge impact on the way the methodologies were thought of in, in the discipline. So an array of a range of theories began to come up in international relations, the critical theories, the, 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 the neo maxim theories, uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the postmodern theories and, and, and many others, in fact, began to, uh, you know, question the, uh, the, the, the centrality of these uh, traditional and behavioral theories. When I'm talking about uh, the critiquing of these theories, uh, it does not mean that the, uh, the traditional theories or so-called classical theories and the methodologies which emanated out of them were completely overlooked. There was a particular kind of uh, a parallel journey, uh, uh, you know, between um, uh, these traditional theories and, and critical theories. One of the important points that we have to bear in mind uh, uh, while talking about uh, while talking about uh, methodologies is um, these theories these uh, uh, theories and uh, methodologies were also informed by uh, a huge uh, um, surge of uh, post colonial uh, theoretical ideas which emanated out of cultural studies and and so on and so forth. So the 80s in that sense was a watershed uh, in the methodological uh, debates of international relations. Uh, critical theories uh, informing uh, the new inquiries in international relations, and especially uh, in the, in the non-Western world. So there was uh, some kind of uh, importance being attached to uh, non-Western realities non-Western ideas in the frameworks of international relations from 80s onwards. And that is something which had uh, shaped or which in turn shaped the, the methodological debates. What I'm trying to suggest is that the post-behavioralist ideas in international relations, with survey methodologies came up uh, in the 80s as a kind of reflection of uh, of, of changing realities of uh, social sciences, and and that is something which which was which was setting the tone for uh, new IR methodologies. So one can find multiple uh, you know layers of uh, methodologies in international relations from the 80s onwards. To a large extent, it became uh, rich and 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 trying to reflect. Uh, you know the, uh, the 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 IR in a, a new format. In, in other words, IRs shift towards new uh, issues, um, which which are distinctly different from uh, the state centrality of the discipline. Was was in a way enriching the methodological debates. Uh, for instance, issues on gender, race. Uh, class and, and, and so on and so forth, uh, began to get certain kinds of attention uh, within IR academia. Uh, those issues were considered to be uh, outside of IR's overall, uh, uh, you know, uh, scheme of things in, in, in vis a -vis, uh, research and, and uh, issues were never, uh, you know, uh, figuring in, in discipline in the past. Uh, and this, this is also part of IR's obsession with the demarcation of its boundaries uh, of uh, themes and issues. Somewhere those issues are considered to be part of the larger domestic and, and, and what is called as international was prioritized and given certain kind of preeminence 
uh, in in the in the uh, methodological uh, debates. Uh, <clears throat> so the point I'm trying to make is the new identities, uh, the new issues, new identities, new regions began to figure in the in the discourses of discipline. That in turn was actually uh, getting reflected in um, methodologies. Uh, of course, uh, the word non-Western IR was not fashionable um, uh, in, in, in those times, but definitely uh, it was the discipline was showing certain kind of uh, interest in uh, capturing the experience of uh, you know the the dominant world, and and that is something which had uh, had a, a, a sort of positive impact on uh, the methodological debates. So as I mentioned earlier, the critical IR that came up uh, in a in a big way in post behavioral phase. Uh, you know, informing uh, the methodological, uh, you know, uh, debates. And this is where we need to look at some of the important methodological trajectories that we see in contemporary period. Uh, <clears throat> the ideas, uh, the, the, in a way, IR is trying to free from uh, the so-called scientism uh, or its obsession with the science. And, and, and it is trying to uh, become more like uh, a critical uh, social science. When I'm talking about IR as a critical social science, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, you know, uh, highlight some of the new trends which are getting manifested. Uh, of course, the IR, you know, in a way has different, uh, uh, you know, um, different kind of uh, uh, versions and different kind of uh, uh, existence and what you call as mainstream IR and and what what sort of uh, you know uh, ideas sometimes are uh, you know prioritized and so on and so. On. But if you look at the entirety of the discipline, entirety of the discipline, you can see that the the critical IR is becoming some becoming as a as part of the core. Uh, in, in, in the uh, contemporary times. So what I'm trying to suggest is that the critical IR is bringing in new methodologies and, and the ideas of, of uh, the non-Western world of different identities are getting reflected. This is where you find uh, enormous importance being attached to uh, new uh, methodological debates around interpretivism, for instance, which looks at uh, you know, uh, the in the subjectivity um, uh, uh, prism to look at uh, multiple uh, issues that affect uh, uh, people and nation states. Uh, in a way, the interpretivism has opened up uh, a wide range of um, you know, opportunities for IR scholars to look at uh, uh, different problems that confront uh, uh, states and uh, and, 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 and people. Uh, some of the issues which, which could not be imagined as part of IR research uh, have become the core of IR research today. And if, if, if you look at uh, the new themes like, for instance, migration or um, um, you know, uh, gender issues and, and um, um, uh, environmental problems, disasters, and many others are becoming uh, part of the new agendas of international relations. Definitely the post-colonial debates in international relations brought, brought in the, uh, you know, the, the essentiality of um, uh, race and, 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 and uh, related uh, issues in, in, in the discipline. But today the discipline is actually uh, widening and methodologies are getting more and more pluralized. Uh, of late, what, what uh, IR scholars generally talk about as uh, methodological pluralism trends in international relations. Instead of, instead of uh, prioritizing on a sense of methods, uh, the, the, the fashion is to, uh, you know, bring in uh, methodological debates from 
different uh, arenas of, of the discipline and also from the related disciplines. This is where the IR is depending on uh, uh, the uh, related disciplines in a subsequent, in a, in a substantial fashion. For instance, um, IR taking, uh, you know, uh, the essence of uh, research practices from sociology, you know, the, or from anthropology, uh, you know, there's a huge importance being attached to ethnography uh, and ethnographical research in international relations today. So uh, a lot of uh, uh, techniques connected with ethnography is being uh, taken into IR uh, research uh, practices and all that. This is, again, a kind of a change in the methodological debates. Or the, 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 when you talk about methodology, obviously what we are uh, broadly hinting at in simpler terms is kind of philosophical position and uh, justification for the methods that we choose to do research, all right? So it, it's about a plan for uh, research. So in that sense, the, the, the justification or the philosophical orientation of research methods and techniques uh, are uh, becoming much more eclectical and much more flexible in order to, uh, to incorporate uh, the, the methods and, and practices from other disciplines. So this is where one finds ethnography as, as an important kind of tool in IR research today. And that kind of research is quite useful, especially for uh, you know, the scholars who are looking at uh, uh, <clears throat> issues which, which are outside of uh, the traditional IR, um, you know, uh, obsessions. For instance, uh, talking about uh, the life of people in conflict zones or life of people uh, in, 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 a, in, a, in a borderland context or the, 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 con the the, from uh, from people's perspective, something of that sort, one would use ethnography, and and in in that particular context, one may use conversation as a kind of personal conversation as a kind of you know uh, method to uh, to gather data, and and something of that sort was uh, you know unimaginable at some point in time. So what I'm trying to suggest is that the the new methods are coming. Uh, and that actually uh, uh, is a reflection of a larger methodological debate. While I was talking, of course, when, when one talks about uh, ethnography and, and its in usages in IR research, one can also uh, look at some of the important techniques being used by, uh, you know, uh, ethnograph eth ethnography uh, um, uh, orientations in IR research, like narrative research, for instance. Uh, na 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 narrative research has become an important uh, area of, uh, you know, uh, um, or has become one of the important tools uh, of research uh, today to, uh, to, to understand multiple kind of issues affecting people in different kind of uh, locations and, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> what I'm trying to suggest is that the methodology the methodological debates in IR um, uh, have become richer in contemporary times by incorporating uh, the research techniques and methods from different related areas. And that is, that is making the contemporary IR research quite uh, uh, meaningful, quite, uh, quite dynamic. Uh, when I'm talking about, uh, you know, the, the, the changes or, or the kind of shift which is happening in IR research uh, today, uh, I'm not actually uh, overlooking uh, the traditional methods and, 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 and techniques or, or and on top of it, the, the traditional methodologies in IR. They, they have their own kind of importance. Uh, I mean, uh, somewhere such kind of debates might also be uh, you know, uh, and uh, helping uh, the uh, the critical IR research also. For instance, um, uh, in a way, uh, the the the, the state-centric um, ideas and and uh, uh, the inquiries around that is actually enriching uh, the uh, uh, the new areas which are 
uh, coming up as part of the critical IR. So <clears throat> the, the, the points that we need to bear in mind when we talk about uh, uh, IR research uh, in contemporary times uh, vis a vis the met methodological debates are concerned. Um, the, the discipline, discipline itself is changing uh, substantially. Uh, you know, uh, there's a perception that IR is becoming more global, global in terms of its uh, theoretical orientation, in terms of its methodological uh, orientation. Um, scholars like Amitabh Ajaria, for instance, has uh, talked about an idea called the global IR. Uh, this particular idea uh, reflects uh, the fact that uh, one has to go beyond uh, what is generally called as non-Western IR. The perception in the non-Western uh, regions and spaces this have a discipline is that it, it, the discipline has to have certain kind of orientation towards non-Western, um, uh, you know, um, settings. But the, the, the counter idea is that the non-Western has to be incorporated into the uh, existing, uh, the IR orientations and, and, and bring in something new, what is broadly called as, or gently called as global IR. So what I'm trying to suggest is that at one level, there is enormous uh, importance being uh, given to uh, theories. At another level, there is uh, importance being given to the overall orientation of the discipline. At another level, there is importance being, enormous importance being given to methodological debates uh, in, in the discipline. To a large extent, these three, uh, three things are closely uh, connected. Okay, the IR is becoming more and more, um, you know, vibrant, and it, it is it is on the trajectory to become a, 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 a truly a global kind of uh, discipline. Not only in terms of its geographic reach, but also in terms of the uh, the the methodological and other kind of uh, orientations. Uh, uh, the thematic orientations and and so on and and, and so uh, so forth. At, at another level, the discipline is is also uh, bringing uh, about a lot of uh, the new trends in the discipline uh, is bringing about a lot of uh, changes in uh, research methods and uh, research techniques. So th these are uh, some of the important factors that we need to uh, bear in mind. Uh, when, when we talk about uh, methodological debates. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is the, the IR as a discipline is, is changing. And second important point is IR's shift or change is also reflecting in methodology. In the process, there are certain kinds of outcomes uh, getting manifested. So there is uh, the, one set of uh, argument uh, within IR uh, methodological debates uh, suggests that there is, uh, is there's some kind of uh, decolonization or decolonizing the IR knowledge. Uh, of course, this is an old uh, uh, idea uh, came up uh, through the post-colonial uh, you know, studies and, and uh, research. But what is happening right now, the decolonizing is happening and also it is, it is being, uh, you know, um, being informed by uh, the experiences from uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, non-Western Global South uh, region. So this is an important uh, point. So <clears throat> what I'm, uh, the, the most important point that I want to um, emphasize is that uh, um, the, the most important point uh, I need to um, um, uh, emphasize or I would like to emphasize is that the, uh, the, the current path of methodological debates uh, which encompass uh, essence of uh, 
post positivist uh, non western experiences are strengthening the discipline and bring in high degree of methodological pluralism by incorporating ideas and techniques from different disciplines from anthropology cultural studies linguistics literature and so on and so forth uh, and this happens in a, a significant post positivist fashion and uh, and that in turn is actually enriching uh, the methodological uh, debates in the discipline uh, in a in an unprecedented fashion so <clears throat> the methodological pluralism uh, is something which is which is uh, getting manifested in ir research um, uh, at least from a critical ir perspective that's how one can look at it uh, again now the point that i need to uh, you know highlight when i'm talking about ir methodological pluralism and so on and so forth there's also a parallel track to international relation there is there is enormous uh, uh, you know emphasis being given uh, to uh, you know uh, the traditional methods in certain kind of research uh, so there is the, in, in that sense there is plurality there is real plurality so the methodological pluralism is something that that is getting manifested in ir research in in contemporary uh, time um i don't know how long can i take or sh sh should i uh, end here and and take questions uh as you wish sir like you uh, we have time uh, like if you if you want to speak more like we have some some time like uh, okay. you, like 10 minutes 15 minutes that's all right all right thank you thank you dr pratesh uh so the point is about maybe i should speak a little bit on uh, the new uh methodological debates in ir uh, in in uh, in some details as i mentioned earlier the new ir debate the ir methodological debates um would give uh, would give uh, <clears throat> ideas like emphasizing on certain issues and themes uh, outside of the conventional ir obsessions so as i mentioned earlier the identities uh, the um, uh, the 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 diversity of regions are becoming the core concerns in new uh, methodological uh, debates i talked about ethnography i i also uh, was thinking at how certain kind of uh, ethnographic uh, methods are becoming important uh, another important point that has to be connected with this debate is that there is a lot of importance being attached with the qualitative research uh, in international relations today and a qualitative research in a post uh, positivist manner in other words the positivist kind of ethnograph uh, the qualitative research that was practiced during the, uh, the behavioralist times uh, has become uh, you know somewhat um, questionable so in in those kind of research there is a disconnect between the researcher and uh, uh, and and the and the research um, so the, what what is happening right now is much more eclectic much more dynamic kind of uh, linkage between the researcher and the research in other words uh, res research has become uh, an important kind of intellectual endeavor where uh, the researchers a uh, researcher's standing also is taken into consideration or in other words the 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 gulf between the, the researcher and the researcher research is getting uh, you know blurred and and in that context the new forms of qualitative research uh, uh, is quite significant uh, one conducts different kinds of 
uh, method, methods or one employs different kinds of methods and techniques to uh, undertake uh, qualitative research in a in a post positivist fashion uh, narrative uh, techniques uh, and based on uh, like uh, in order to operationalize that one uh, you know brings in uh, personal conversations uh, uh, interviews uh, in a different uh, format and 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 uh, uh, you know uh, the the different kinds of uh, participatory observations and and so on and so forth now this this kind of orientation in uh, qualitative research in a post positivist fashion in ir is is, is somewhat different in the sense that the conventional IR research uh, prioritize certain kind of uh, sources as, as the most significant ones. Uh, for instance, uh, the government data or um, uh, the documents from different uh, uh, official agencies and, and uh, uh, certain kind of uh, you know, uh, archival materials and, and so on and so forth. Today, of course, those, those sources are equally important. It is not that those sources have become redundant, but along with that, one, one takes into consideration different kinds of sources, different kinds of information, different kinds of inputs, which are actually, you know, strengthening the IR research. For instance, if somebody, some IR scholar works on um, sex trafficking, um, one has to look at different kinds of sources. It is not that one has to depend only on government sources or official data. One might talk to people to get the experience of people, their personal views on people who are who, who are perhaps victims or who are part of a larger, you know, uh, the problem. So this is where the critical IR would be looking at different kinds of qualitative techniques and methods. And this is where the new methodological debates are becoming significant. IR at one level tries to give importance to the state centrality in, in research, in, especially in the uh, conventional form of IR research. At another level, IR also takes into consideration different kind of, kind of issues which were hitherto neglected. And in order to understand those neglected issues, uh, one has to uh, bring in new methods and techniques. And, you, and in the process, we are actually bringing in new methodological orientations and this is this is an important point perhaps uh, uh, students of uh, or and we are all students of social sciences in general i talk uh, a little bit from the standpoint of uh, international relations uh, since uh, the, you know the, the, we are all broadly part of social science research i thought some of these debates would be giving ideas as to how a new, relatively new discipline like international relations is, uh, uh, is, is moving in the contemporary period and how um, dynamically disciplines like IR um, are incorporating uh, uh, the new methodological orientations into its uh, structure and in the process getting uh, richer and richer. Uh, I'll stop it here and I will uh, definitely uh, take uh, some questions from audience. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Professor Rashtraji, for your insightful lecture on the emerging trends and approaches in the field of IR. Uh, some of the, like uh, you talked about, uh, you talked, you rightly talked about like how IR has moved uh, from, uh, you know, traditional theories and uh, uh, how it has incorporated the new trends and approaches and uh, new themes have been introduced uh, in IR. And uh, that has also reflected in uh, the uh, 
research methodology of IR itself. Uh, thank you very much for that insightful lecture. Uh, we definitely have some questions. Uh, I would uh, one by one like read it out to you and uh, please. Uh, uh, okay, just I'll read it out, sir. Uh, okay, the first question is, could you just throw some light on postmodernist methodology in IR? Okay. This is from Srinivas Junu Guru. Yeah, so the point is the postmodernist uh, methodologies in IR question the, the epistemological practices of conventional IR. For instance, uh, the postmodernist uh, orientation within IR questions the, the nexus between uh, the the knowledge produced and the and and the uh, and 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 the producer of the knowledge. In other words, there is a power relation. So what is what is uh, stated as or what is projected as knowledge is actually a, a problematic uh, terrain. So postmodernism tries to critique the linkage between uh, the knowledge and the the, uh, the, 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 the the researcher. I'm taking um, uh, you know um, more uh, into this particular question into a methodological debates. So this is where the particular, for instance, when you talk about ideas like anarchy, for instance, in international relations, or ideas like uh, sovereignty, for instance. And these are like very uh, basic things, but you know those ideas, the way they are represented in the mainstream IR the theoretical frameworks, like realism, for instance, or liberalism, for instance, are a reflection of a particular kind of power relations. So the postmodernist literature, postmodernist methodologies would bring in a critical perspective of how power relations are built between some of the key concepts which are being used in IR. They are not merely, uh, you know, uh, a given uh, terminologies, or they are not something which are outside of, uh, you know, certain kind of uh, power relations. So when you talk about, say, ideas like anarchy, uh, you know, often in a realist discourse, it is, of, it is stated that uh, anarchy is a given situation when you study uh, the classical uh, scholarship uh, like Morgan Doe, E.H. Carr and all that. And that's what we get. But today, uh, there's a much more, uh, uh, you know, uh, clear nuanced perspective that those ideas are not, not given. They are being constructed. Uh, of course, constructive school tries to, uh, you know, give that kind of idea. Uh, but postmodernism, uh, you know, parallelly is also trying to question some of these uh, knowledge building practices uh, within uh, IR academia. Uh, th this is kind of simpler uh, explanation, uh, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm interrupting here. I'm so sorry. No I uh, I just wanted to thank you first, yes. uh, Rajista, for joining us. Yes. And I, I have a question here. Ah. Uh, so I, I would like to uh, read it out. Uh, for a researcher from the South, engaging in research in uh, non-traditional aspects of um, you know, international uh, relations, for an example, migration generations that we have spoken about, um, uh, it, it requires the researcher to maybe um, you know have a field study and interaction with the native community and policymakers in the West if uh, you know they are picking up certain issues uh, from there. So how do you suggest if work uh, to uh, basically carry out an effective research there? Because sometimes it is difficult for a researcher from the South to immediately engage with the community there. Uh, so what is the feasible way to basically uh, you know, carry out uh, research over there. If you can put a light on that. Yeah, I think uh, that's a that's a that's a valid question. It's quite pertinent. Uh, like how a scholar from the global south conducts research in the uh, uh, in, in a in a context outside of uh, her own uh, region. Uh, 
Um, and I think that's a question that you were trying to, uh, you know, ask. The point is, yes, those are uh, difficult, especially, uh, you know, like I, I'm, I'm sure uh, your question perhaps comes out of uh, your own experience as a scholar of true. European studies. And yes, true. To go to, yeah, I, uh, I am sorry yeah, to just in work yeah. in, I, like I had faced problems. that uh, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which so a problem. Of course, uh, definitely, uh, when you look into the uh, social dimensions of, uh, you know, of international relations in different regions outside of one's own, uh, is always a problem. But then perhaps one has to use certain kind of general protocols of research. And that that is being uh, accepted, uh, you know, uh, like. Uh, but the my point on uh, global south or non-western IR orientation was broadly linked with how the current methodological debates in the discipline are incorporating experiences from the non-Western regions, the, the scholars, non-Western scholars from non-Western experiences, or the global IR looking at uh, the non-Western experience in what fashion they are doing. But as you rightly pointed out, it's a more like a technique and method problem. Like when you, of course, it can be also a methodological problem. Like when one wants to do research in a different context, what should we do? I think there are certain kind of, uh, you know, accepted protocols within the uh, discipline for cross-cultural, uh, you know, research projects. Uh, uh, that that has to be, and, and that is where many things might be important. Communication might be an important area that has to be given a lot of importance on that kind. And 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 perhaps understanding. Uh, the, or, or getting uh, the first-hand information about, especially uh, sociological uh, and, and historical uh, information about a specific uh, research location is 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 really significant. Uh, so a lot of people talk about uh, the essentiality of language as an important tool to conduct research in those contexts. For instance. A person uh, wants to do research on a uh, German political system uh, might be better placed if she knows uh, German language, right? So I think those protocols have become more or less uh, commonsensical uh, in the contemporary uh, context and one looks into uh, the, uh, the essentiality of, um, you know, the language as a major kind of tool to, uh, but the, the problem um, that often uh, we find in the discipline is that the, the experiences of the non-Western are not taken into consideration while building theories. This is where the criticism of IR comes. I mean, research methods and techniques are, 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 are definitely important issues, but beyond that, or more than that, there is also a problem with the theory building or methodological debates because they do not give much importance to the experiences from the non-Western world. So that is something uh, problematic. That is one area and issue that's being addressed right now. Uh, uh, Dr. Manasseh's question is quite uh, pertinent. It is also important uh, that we need to uh, understand how one can conduct research in in a different social cultural settings, uh, uh, we, we talk about uh, a non-Western scholar working on a Western setting uh, is is an. But there are some kind of uh, you know protocols and and uh, uh, you know tools available to conduct research to a large extent. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for answering that. Uh, Anad, we, since like uh, we are short of time and we will be taking only two questions and yeah. there are so many questions, it is flooded already. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll take two questions and rest of the questions I'll uh, send you through email. Uh, 
Right. I would request you to kindly respond sure. to them in okay. uh, and at your own convenience, sir. Yeah. Sure. Sure. And we will forward it to our uh, audience. Uh, I'll take this question. There is this uh, Rachna is asking, uh, and I quote: "How the post, uh, how the positionality of researcher can be qualified as a grounded research rather than a personal generalization of post-colonial experiences." Yeah. As social anthropologist, I think to qualify person. Uh, personal observation and experiences require various lens. Uh, should I read it once again? Or uh... Uh, broadly, I understood uh, the question. Uh, like how the personal uh, experiences of the researcher uh, can be given a primacy uh, over uh, you know the other uh, concern. Yes, uh, that that of course is an important issue. But at the same time. Uh, Today, one of the fashionable, one of the important uh, uh, theories or method, methods that is being, um, uh, you know, used to understand uh, socio, socio-economic or socio-cultural or social research in general is grounded theory. Okay. One, one can build a, a certain kind of theoretical assumptions based on data. One goes to the field with certain kind of uh, openness and collect the data and uh, try to build theory. The grounded theory debates, uh, you know, is is something which is connected with uh, these kind of issues. Uh, yes, um, it's not that a personal experiences would be uh, generalized into uh, into a grand theory building. Uh, when uh, when on brings in you know elements of subjectivity into research, there are certain kind of methods and protocols to uh, you know uh, to uh, undertake such kind of research, um, and and uh, it it is not that the personal experiences would be always. Uh, getting uh, upper hand when it comes to uh, theory building. But one thing we need to bear in mind is most of these critical methodological perspectives do not give much importance to the idea called objectivity. And, and objectivity is not something which is objectivity in a very uh, behavior positivist sense. It is not that uh, the, there is no there cannot be a, a situation where on, on can't agree. There is, or, or people can't agree on certain things. There is agreement on several things. There are certain kind of uh, strong consensus on uh, uh, knowledge in, in certain areas. But the way we used to project objectivity by looking at say game theory or uh, some of those uh, you know, important uh, positivist uh, ideas, are not given much importance uh, in a certain kind of critical IR research. Uh, therefore, how to build the theory, how to, how to uh, draw inferences out of uh, personal experiences of a research with a, a problem research is done through certain kind of uh, systematic ways. Uh, there are, for instance, when you do uh, narrative research, for instance, there are clear cut protocols on how to do narrative research, how to, how to represent data, how to, how to collect data, how to interpret data, how to draw inference out of the data that we have collected, and how, how a certain kind of uh, data has to be, uh, you know, uh, seen critically, and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to suggest is that uh, while talking about uh, the personal uh, or personal uh, dimensions or subjective dimensions in in uh, social science research, I'm not actually trying to suggest that the the entire personal prejudices or uh, or ideas would be reflected as research. There are certain kind of 
protocols and ways of uh, you know looking at problems and we and and in the process even the personal biases also will be uh, taken into consideration so in that sense it's a dynamic process it's not something uh, you know related to somebody uh, talking about some issues in a in a random fashion there are clear cut uh, you know protocols and ways of uh, doing research though uh, the the subjective elements are taken into consideration what you call as in the subjectivity and so on and so forth is actually one of the uh, lenses through which many of these uh, social issues are being examined yeah so thank you uh, there is another question by dipti kashyap yeah uh, hello sir can we bridge the methodological approach in ir and geopolitics hmm. yeah uh, see the geopolitics geopolitics is again one of the areas where there is lot of methodological contestations right and how geopolitics can be uh, seen and understood even if, if even when we take uh, you know the existing uh, geopolitical theories there is a huge uh, variation in terms of uh, understanding what actually constitute uh, geopolitical dynamics the, the classical theories to a critical uh, geopolitics classical geopolitics to critical geopolitics to feminist geopolitics and there is a wide range of uh, theoretical uh, debates on geopolitics now the unity among uh, different methodologies is is actually a pro problematic uh, terrain but to a large extent one can of course use certain kind of eclectic approach to understand geopolitics but at the same time the the interpret the analysis and interpretation can can be done from from a specific uh, um, you know methodological position also a lot of people work on a uh, geopolitics from the standpoint of say a heartland theory or sea power theory and 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 things like that and somebody would be looking at geopolitics from a feminist geopolitics position where, where it, it, the whole uh, you know the the whole foundation of knowledge building in uh, geopolitics is is critiqued and questioned so so that there is huge diversity uh, in terms of understanding uh, um, you know these kind of uh, research issues this is where i was referring to an idea called methodological pluralism thank you sir sir i have one question from my my like i have my question one uh, like we have been uh, i'm not a student of ir and uh, although i have like uh, here read uh, an article here and there uh, i had like uh, always like uh, see uh, we have been reading in newspapers and everywhere at so many places the national interest quote and quote uh but uh, there is some like and it was talked always as if it was there was a singularity to national interest yes. i i would like you to uh, like uh, i would like you to comment on whether there is any singularity to national interest is there any uh, like singular national interest that exists and uh, or whether that is like uh, so dynamic and simultaneously uh, what is uh, and if it is not singular then why do we talk uh as if it was a static and singular uh, the the question on uh, singularity uh on a concept in ir i think that is something uh, problematic as i mentioned earlier uh it depends on what sort of theoretical lens that one would employ if there are certain kind of ideas about national interest sovereignty uh, you know uh, anarchy and 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 so on and so forth they are considered to be uh, you know sacrosanct uh, concepts in uh, mainstream ir so uh, and 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 uh, especially from the standpoint of uh, the mainstream theories like realism and and so on and so forth so they they go by they they take into consideration certain kind of 
uh, ideas as important uh, in, in the context of a specific state. And that particular idea may be having certain kind of historical uh, context, uh, maybe having uh, its own kind of contemporary context. And based on that, they would come to certain kind of consensus and, and, and work around it. And But if a scholar looks at those problems from a different perspective, there may, there may be different kind of priorities on, on, the, on, on that uh, kind of research. One might have a critical perspective perhaps, or might actually take into consideration the plurality of views on uh, some of those issues. Uh, this is this is enough, this is one of the reasons why one should look at the positionality of the scholar, and that is that is really important. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, the the, the analysis. Uh, would not make much sense. Uh, for instance, um, a, a feminist IR scholar would be looking at uh, different kind of issues and, and themes and would be looking at issues like national interest in a different way. Perhaps it, the national interest would be seen from a gender perspective. Uh, okay, a post-colonial theorist would be looking through the prism of race. Uh, so what actually constitute the, the 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 analytical lens that would in turn inform uh, the uh, research orientations. Uh, but uh, generally, the the when many of the research that we see as part of our foreign policy or uh, geopolitics are done from the perspective of uh, of realism of different shapes. Uh, that, that's one of the reasons why the tend to focus on a few things as 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 a kind of you know what you call a set uh, notions sure. yeah. uh, we will uh, there is one question one more question i would re uh, read that uh, this is from professor anil p joshi and he is asking uh, what are the impact as of gender race and ethnicity on international relations yeah. Good question. In fact, uh, there's enormous importance uh, being given to race, gender, and uh, uh, the other point that was uh, mentioned. The idea is there are enormous space for different different uh, types of research in an in in higher academia today. Definitely the race uh, as an important theoretical lens was introduced in the discipline long time ago. Post-colonial uh, studies, post-colonial research, in fact, brought in uh, interesting, refreshing points on uh, race. That partially came out of, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the writings of scholars from Africa and, and also from American uh, context and so on and so forth. Uh, some of them, some of those research came primarily in cultural studies, literature, so on and so forth, which later on was incorporated into IR. Now, a lot of scholarship is happening uh, within the uh, discipline on on race and IR, and and uh, some of those debates are again connected with uh, larger questions on. Um, um, history and IR, colonialism and, and IR, and, and stuff like that, the points like that. So what I'm trying to suggest is that there is there's a kind of, uh, you know, effort on the part of IR scholars to focus on issues like IR, uh, on, on race. And, and another important point is gender. There's enormous uh, importance being given to uh, gender studies in international relations. And not only from the Western perspective, but also from non-Western experiences. And different shades of uh, feminist uh, uh, debates are actually informing IR research. Uh, Non-Western experiences are taken into consideration. Different types of identities uh, as uh, uh, 
uh, identities vis-a-vis -vis gender are taken into consideration. This is where people talk about intersectionality. So the intersectionality research is an important uh, uh, feature of uh, uh, research, especially the ones pertaining to gender. Another point that I want to emphasize is the non-traditional security studies is also contributing to the richness of the discipline. This is where the methodological debates in the, in the, in the field are getting more and more vibrant. Okay? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's on environment, it's on disaster, it's on health studies, migration. Uh, so the, 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 uh, the, the boundaries of discipline is getting widened and new themes are getting you know, incorporated into new regions are, and their experiences are being given uh, you know, importance. And uh, new identities are given or identities are given certain kind of uh, importance which were hitherto neglected. So all these processes are contributing to the enriching of methodological debates in the field. Uh, thank you, Professor Sharji. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your insightful uh, uh, opinion on IR, new trends in IR. I'm sure that it is going to help our uh, new emerging scholars, young scholars, uh, and they would incorporate these new approaches in their studies and research further. Thank you very much for uh, your thank you. time. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you so much for the, in, uh, for the invitation. I thank uh, Dr. Manasi Sinha once again for inviting me to this prestigious it program. Was, it was really a uh, you know, insightful session, an informative session. We have more questions, uh, you yeah, know, actually. Answer to, so, <laughs> uh, participants to yes, but yeah. due to paucity of time, yeah, we're not able to accommodate all questions, but we'll send it to you across, uh, please, uh, you know. Sure. Uh, also, yeah. please uh, send us a, a list of study, reference. Uh, some reading our, yes, 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 please. Sure. Thank I'll, you I'll so do. much. I'll get back I'll to you. That. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with this, I would call this session uh, an end. And uh, participants, may I request, like uh, it was the tea break was supposed to be at 11.30. But uh, since it is already 11.45, let us meet at 12. Uh, so from... Uh, sir, we are uh, continuing the session. Achha, are we... Uh, we will meet after the session uh, for break. So uh, uh, because we are already short of time, uh, okay. let us continue with the session and then we'll go back for uh, the break. Okay, like so... Uh, Ma'am is here. Shital Ma'am is here already. Shital Ma'am, are you here? I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. I'm yes, ma'am. So, uh, Pratu sir, uh, so we are ending the session. Oh, okay. So, we're continuing with so, uh, the uh, next session because uh, the time is already there. So, uh, uh, over to you, okay. Shital Good morning, everyone. So uh, I would hand over, good morning, ma'am. I would hand over this, uh, like, uh, this session to Ishrat ma'am, uh, Dr. Ishrat Jaha. Uh, Dr. Ishrat ma'am, may I request, like, you, you are on mute, so please. Uh, you are on mute, ma'am. Ishrat ma'am. Uh, she's not able to unmute. Can you please unmute her? Is it done? Yes. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma thank you so much, ma'am, for coming us. Uh, thank you for joining us in the 10th session of day three. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Ishrat moderating the session for you. Today, we are delighted to have you again, ma'am, Dr. Sheetal Sharma with us. Dr. Sheetal Sharma is an assistant professor at the Center for European Studies, JNU. Before joining JNU, she taught the emergence of sociological theory in Europe and methodology of social sciences as the curriculum of degree program of the London School of Economics and Political Science. Dr. Sharma holds a doctorate degree in sociology. She has completed a video lecture series in sociology for NCRT's project. She has also been invited as a discussant on several programs on TV and YouTube and radio. 
She has been awarded a JNU Research Excellence Award for outstanding contribution in, and excellence in the field of social sciences and humanities for the year 2018-19 in the Young Scholar category. She has been also uh, she has also been selected for the prestigious European Union Visitor Program 2020. This program is the study visit to Brazil individually tailored to gain first-hand information on the European Union values, functioning activities, policies, and perspective. Dr. Sheetal Sharma is going to speak on the topic entitled MOOC Research Fellowship Grants in India and Europe. This session will focus on the development of e-contained for MOOCs. It will discuss the idea for MOOCs, MOOCs of the same platform of the Ministry of Education, Government of India how to develop e-contain including e-text references assessment and the video for online courses since national education policies 2020 has placed a lots of emphasis on the digital learning the presentation will be useful for understanding the concept of e-learning it's a pleasure to have you ma'am again on this fdp after completing the session we will be having around 10 to 15 minutes for question and answers for any queries related to this lecture, participants are welcome to put their questions in chat box. Before handing over to Cheetal Ma'am, participants are requested to kindly fill out the feedback form for this session. Now I am requesting to Dr. Cheetal Sharma to take over. Thank you so much, Ma'am. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Yes, you have to mute yourself so that my voice yes, is Good morning, everyone, once again. And uh, here I'm going to talk about MOOCs particularly. And this is something which is yet another aspect of faculty development program. And before I begin my presentation, we are almost two and a half days into the five uh, day faculty development program. And I hope all my participants are enjoying the program and they're getting benefited, enriched by the kind of resource persons and the uh, discussions that are happening here. I'm overwhelmed to see the response of a uh, large number of people, their questions and their intelligent questions, you know. And if you agree with me, just mention this in our feedback form that you have actually been benefited by it or let us know how we can improve. Now, coming on to today's presentation and uh, particularly about MOOCs and uh, why MOOCs and why this is being called as one of the aspects of faculty development program. Now, uh, as I mentioned in the previous one of these sessions that this is faculty development program to develop faculties of the faculty, those who are teaching a large number of students all across India and globe. Now, why particularly uh, MOOCs and that too on Swam platform? In this particular lecture, I'm going to discuss my experience of offering courses online, and which is not just related to MOOCs on Swam platform, but otherwise also, I was associated with development of online digital programs for last nine to 10 years. And I'll be sharing my experience, which is very important, number one, uh, for your professional benefit, number two, for uh, the other non-professional benefits, and number three, for uh, enhancing our digital presence and making lifetime resources. So my presentation in the next 45 to 50 minutes is going to organize, being will be organized on these four or five points. Significance of online learning, portals, design, development, delivery, text videos, assessment, and techniques. Now, let us understand that uh, why do we try to see MOOCs as an important component in this? And what are MOOCs? You can see all these points mentioned here, but I'll, I'll weave all these points, integrate all these points in one small narration for you, that MOOCs are not new. They might be a new concept for most of us, but they had already been in existence for a long period of time. And MOOCs are massive online open courses, massive online open courses, which offer us all this flexibility of time, variety of courses, easy to communicate, customize my learning environment, easy to connect across time and space, and whatever you may call in, in terms of the simplicity and easiness. It's, it's ease of doing business, and right? so yeah, ease of getting uh, you know, educated or learning, easiness in learning. This is what the package called as MOOCs offers you. Now, why MOOCs basically? Because MOOCs tend to give you a kind of environment in which uh, if you are not part of the mainstream education system for some reasons, 
or if you are located in a remote area, or if you are not in a position to actually have or mobilize resources to get educated, at least one way. And even if you have resources, sometimes you may not be part of the mainstream because of many other reasons, social, personal, familial, professional, whatever. Or otherwise also for intellectual reasons, you may become part of MOOCs or MOOCs are out there for you to actually uh, learn a lot, much more than what has been happening in the conventional physical classroom teaching. So these are the courses which have open access and have an interactive participation by means of web. Yes, web is necessary because we are talking of a digital world. When you say that you are doing, uh, you know, physical classes, you are you are you are constrained by space. Aap kitna travel karoge? You can travel 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers maximum, depending upon. I had a student who used to travel 125 kilometers every day. So beyond that, it's not possible for everybody or anybody to travel to and fro every day. So we are constrained by in physical educational setups, but MOOCs tend to cut those strings of constraints of physicality, movement, and getting connected or remaining connected every day. But yes. What is the means of transportation here or what is the means of connection here is your digital connectivity. So it's on the web. And it provides the learners or the participants the similar kind of learning experience along with some added advantages. And what are those? They are lectures, videos, and study material problem sets, all which, which is mentioned here. Now, I will run a bit quickly because I have to cover a lot of ground uh, uh, for Swayam and MOOC. And this is very interesting. And I would ask you to keep a note of everything if in case you want to develop something as digital uh, you know, courses that, that, that are uh, weighted very highly in the new education policy, as they're saying that 40% of education will be now online and you are being in the uh, education sector, you must take benefit of this. You know, how do you remain your, uh, leave your digital imprints uh, in the field of education? So Swayam was this. What was uh, Swayam? The three cardinal principles of access, equity, and quality. Now, access means that those who are not part of the mainstream. Equity is a kind of uh, uh, spreading out the levels and the types of educational courses and everything to everyone and quality also. That is quality does not mean that in some areas teacher are not, are not of good quality. I, by quality, I, I never misunderstand quality by saying that a teacher is not of good quality. Quality comes with the resources that you have. Say, for instance, for a long period of time, you know, uh, we did not have access to libraries easily or even digital libraries or sometimes uh, to run something as audio video. I'll show you a couple of examples like a like a practical session. But suppose I keep on telling you, you know, that in Cold War, Germany got divided between East and West Germany. And then uh, within uh, Berlin, there were four sectors. You might think, what is she talking about? Wall, this sector, this. You know, you might get confused. The moment I show you a map, that this is Germany, this is how it got divided into East and West, this is Berlin, Berlin being capital of this, uh, uh, West Germany, and then this is how it was divided in four or five sectors, the understanding becomes easy. So quality comes with equipment and uh, Corona crisis has revealed that in some remote areas, in some regional areas, teachers have come up with such innovative ways to remain connected to their students. And you have, you have seen all those WhatsApp messages going around, uh, teachers in remote areas, uh, one teacher, single man army in the entire school or colleges, somehow managing people are swimming across the rivers, hanging their phones with hangers and all this. And still they were so committed to their, uh, their vocation, their, their passion for teaching. So quality is there, but quality is largely dependent upon the kind of things that are at your disposal to make understanding easy for the learners. And that is why we tend to package the MOOCs in such a way that everybody enjoys and gets engaged in the process of learning rather than finding because when you are sitting on net, when you are connected to internet, there are large many other things, lot many other things, you know, to enjoy rather than uh, listening to your lectures. So uh, you have to capture the attention and that is the central or the backbone of online courses, how to retain the engagement level of your learner. This is the mantra which you have to have in your mind before you venture on to develop a course. Now, what are the benefit of MOOCs courses? MOOCs is certainly not a sudden response to current situation. 
because uh, MOOCs were already in existence. It started in 2015, the idea was initiated, then it took some time to design the way it has to be executed. And then you know how a massive project takes time to get launched. And then from 2016, the teams were identified and people started preparing courses and all these things. They are permanent life resources. They exist in module forms, updated regularly. And then topic-based, which is, um, uh, a particular topic is also there, but this is connected to the entire sequence of uh, the other things and then interdisciplinary in nature. Last two, three points are important. As I repeat, you know, that interdisciplinary is very important and that is the emphasis of new education policy also. Suppose I gave you this example of French Revolution. May not be a direct topic in sociology, but very important from historical perspective or for the students of history and political science. So how do I enhance my knowledge? As a teacher, at least I must be able to tell from few of the salient features of French Revolution to my students and then later on ask them to go and watch that or read more about French Revolution. So this is enhancing my additional knowledge, which is always gainful. And then no security concerns. Initially, when we started with Zoom, there were issues related to my email got hacked and somebody's asking for money and this and that. There is nothing because it's it's a it's a security certificate ensured kind of system. It's it's already there. And yes, you have issues of copyright and plagiarism. And where do they arise? I'll just tell you in some time. And this has a formal structure. By NRC, I mean National Resource Coordinator. By CC, I mean course coordinator. And SME is the subject matter expert and a reviewer is a reviewer. So it's a formal structure which we follow in MOOCs and this is how MOOCs are developed. Now, uh, the next slide talks about that it seeks to bridge the digital divide. This I have taken from SWAM website only, which I'm gonna demonstrate in, uh, in a while, but deliberately kept in order to um, apprise you, orient you about the entire package called as MOOCs and what, what is it, you know, it's, it's doing actually. And this is again there, huh. this is what uh, uh, it started with. The project of digitization of books had started long back. It was initiated somewhere around 2010 or uh, yes, 2010, where CIET, uh, a part of NCRT was entrusted with the task of development of digital books. And what is digital books? That the class 11 and 12, and further descending down to other levels, but it started with 11th and 12th, that you have to convert these books into digital lectures. So I was given the task to teach sociology and with my uh, performance, they said, ma'am, since you are related to political science also, so I, I recorded few lectures in political science and sociology for class 12 students, uh, political science and sociology, 11 and 12. Now, digitization of books was that one chapter, suppose the book has five chapters. So every chapter, one chapter has to be divided into two, four, six, eight, even number of episodes, okay? It depends upon the uh, teacher that, and how many episodes I want to teach. And every episode is for 15 minutes, roughly 15 minutes. And these were shown on uh, channels like as Kishore Manch, Evidya, uh, Evidya was not there then, sorry. Uh, Kishore Manch, Bal, uh, DD, DD Education, all those channels which were uh, related to education. And certain, ch these channels were free. And these uh, programs were telecast throughout the day with the uh, first physics, then chemistry, then bio, and this, 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 slots are there. And then they were, suddenly lockdown happened. And to be honest with you, lockdown was a blessing in disguise for all of us, those who were working in the field of digitization of books. Then earlier we had a limited constituency uh, referring to this. And suddenly there was a massive rise in the, uh, you know, uh, what do you say, click through ratio. And how many? And then uh, this, this, this particular message I have pasted from my WhatsApp. This came on the NCRT group and they said that now these are available on Tata Sky Dish, this, 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 and ask your children. This was uh, 24th or 25th of uh, March, 2020, when lockdown was imposed. So we suddenly got a fill that look, our, our work, our hard work has been recognized in such a fantastic way. And you can later on have access to these lectures also, if in case anybody is in SNC, uh, at, is studying uh, in schools or is associated with CBSC syllabus or otherwise also, this is very interesting to go. Now, how it functions. 
the Ministry of HRD at that point of time, now it's called as Ministry of Education, identified national coordinators, resource coordinators, those who were coordinating the resources for development of these courses. And there are nine national resource coordinators. And uh, the, the purpose of uh, construction of these resource coordinators was to coordinate the production and identification of team and all. So who are these nine coordinators? They are AICT, NPTEL, UGC, CEC, NCRT, NEOS, IGNO, IIM, Bangalore, and NITTTR. And these are the areas they are engaged in. My experience has been with NCERT because I was associated with sociology uh, textbook development. And this is how I became part of the subject matter expert team. Now I'll explain my, uh, I'll share with you, not explain, I'll share with you my experience about working with them. So uh, uh, all these nine resource coordinators and please identify yourself, you know, throughout my request to you is that apne bare mein just think about ki main kaun sa course de sakta hu ya de sakti hu kis resource coordinator ke saath coordinate kar sakta hu ya kar sakti hu and then how can i uh, come together and form a team and i'll tell you you know quickly uh, throughout the discussion that how can you actually apply and where to apply now uh, along with this an online discussion forum is uh, developed what is that Suppose you have 500 learners enrolled for your course. As soon as you and uh, get 500, there is one teaching assistant who is given to you. So I'm narrating more of NCRT's experience, but the broad skeleton remains the same. Thoda about cosmetic is up and down. And what are those? Those also I'll tell you. So online discussion forum is there. And every month or fortnightly, there is an online telecast where students have some queries they write to you in email or uh, the team of assistant, they reply from your side because you cannot you know, keep on answering all these questions with your other uh, projects in your hand. So the research assistants or the teaching assistants do it. And once in your choice, you know, it depends upon even annually or biannually or quarterly or monthly or fortnightly, you can get connected to students depending upon your availability to answer their question. And this is uh, announced much in advance that this, this is the time when sociology, political science, bio or physics teacher would be available. Now, coming on to this, that uh, the course coordinator and how do they go about it? I quickly come on to certain things. This is the text which I have, which I have taken from the Swayam website. And now I'll take you to the tour of the site, you know, so that you tend to get uh, the idea about this is if you write Swayam portal, come on to Swayam portal, come on to Swayam central. Is my this visible? Ishrat, I'm seeing you just raise your thumb. Fine? Yes. Now, see, these are the course coordinator, which I've just shown you. All these are the course coordinators, which are running various types of courses. And so I am benefits and all, please, after my lecture, experiment with this site, okay? Open it and there is a lot for you in this. And if in case there's any doubt, please get back to me. I'll help you out, all right? Now, let me share this part to you. This is NCRT. So in NCRT, you have these many partnering institutions, these many courses completed. This is this exam registration and successful certification. You will not find in many cases because we have not been able to come to a consensus over credits and all that. And 10 plus 2, you know, is a very uh, tricky thing in India's uh, uh, education system. So we are yet to come on to that stage unless and until we offer all the courses uh, get seamlessly connected to all other NRC. Till then, it will remain zero. Otherwise, the rest of the statistics is very impressive. Now, view course catalog. You click on to view course catalog and uh, the kind of courses which are being offered, they will come here. And uh, these are the on upcoming courses which are going to be offered by NCERT. Accountancy, bio, 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 chemistry, economics, English, geography, geography, maths, physics, psycho, socio, and this is socio. Now, suppose I click on to, because I'm a course coordinator for sociology, these two courses, this one in sociology and this one. So I click on to this. When I click on to this, the sociology part two course begins, okay? 
And so far, the date has just uh, begun. So we have so far got 176 people enrolled. And this is here, the course is upcoming. It hasn't started. Duration is 24 weeks. Start is 20 December. End date is 31st May. Exam date is uh, 24th May. And this is how it goes. This is the description of the course. And this is the course layout. This is how you go about it. Books and references, the course certificate. Okay. This is what you see here in the course layout. And I'll show you this video after a while, but first let's, let me come back to the PPT that I was sharing with you. Now, coming back to this PPT, this all information that is shown here is available on this Swayam website, okay? That how do you do it? Uh, a, a course coordinator is identified. You may say that, ma'am, how a course coordinator is identified? There are two ways of identification. Since NCRT was already working with the team, so it was easy for them to identify people. And all those who are offering courses, they were part of the digitization uh, process of uh, books and all that. So it was easy for them to identify the people, those who are going to work for them. Otherwise, also, there are EOIs, expression of interest for a particular course. And this gets uh, the window of EOI expression of interest is opened periodically. And I'll show you how to access that also. And uh, there you can go experiment with it, prepare your course, identify the team whom you want to work with. And then you can launch your course. You, you submit your proposal. Proposal gets passed or does not get passed depends upon the quality of the course that you want to offer. And if in case some modifications are required, they ask you to modify this or change this and do these corrections. And then you resubmit it, then it gets approved. And after a lot of hard work, you have to prepare the course and upload it. And then rest is going to become history. So this is how in a two weeks you um, uh, propose and proposal has all these things. And the, the basic structure, I'll... I'll uh, Rakshita, I know you are raising hands, but I'll answer all your questions after it. Huh? Otherwise, if it's, it's by mistake, you can lower down your hand. Hmm? So this is assessment system and uh, the other part of it. Now, what is the benefit to the developer? ma'am, what's the benefit of developing this? The fir first and foremost benefit to the developer is this, that every module that you prepare for uh, this is given, can you see this Na by national publisher here, e-content develop in four quadrant per module MOOCs is given five marks each. So if in case you have developed four modules, you get 20 marks in your API. And I think I'm assuming, I'm not sure, please uh, don't take this as final word carved in stone. But I am assuming that in national education policy, since so much emphasis is being given on digital uh, education, this might be raised to at least eight or nine in future, maybe 10 also. If not, I'll at least people like me will propose that this must be raised in order to promote and attract faculty members to develop e-content. So both for sciences and all across the disciplines, here they create our faculty of sciences and languages and everything. This is five marks each equivalent to your chapter in book. And this is also e-content e and this. Now, this is the professional reward. The financial reward is also associated with writing the e-text and uh, recording a video. And uh, I, I take you back to if in case, I'll, I'll show you that in, uh, in some time from now, but the ministry gives you, once again, I'm using my board, roughly, roughly 11,000 rupees per module. Okay, 11,000 rupees, 11,000 to 11,500 are per module. Okay, so if in case you are developing an annual course of 40 modules, you get 4.5 lakhs of rupees per course. Okay, and this, this particular 11,500, if I write 11.5, is distributed or divided among two, three people. How it is divided? When you write, and I'm telling you NCRT uh, mode of payment, they give you 4,000 rupees for every text module that you write, every text module, okay, text, P-E-X-T, the written part of it. They pay you 5,000 for the video, okay, and they pay you 2,000 for review. 
So this is how your eleven thousand gets divided, and five hundred you will say kaha gaya. So that is a technical team ka, um, assistance ke liye hota hai because they organize workshops, and these workshops you are give, paid uh, TAD and all these things. So this is how you are paid to develop a module. On the contrary, UGC pays you, I think, eight thousand for video, two thousand for text, and one or two for review. So, mota mota, broadly, eleven to eleven point five thousand rupees are allocated for every module, and which are distributed by NRCs in the way they like. And mostly, this is a equitable distribution. Justice hota hai apki kam ko whatever you are doing. This is. one is professional benefit the other one is the financial benefit and my dear friends the intangible benefits are immense i tell you honestly and i would like just share with you 60 seconds that the kind of uh, you know visibility that you get number one and uh, in case of ncert you know a large number of aspirants are doing upsc and upsc me kehte hain class 7 se onwards science and social science you must master all these books in order to uh, uh, crack prelims and all these things and uh, i personally sharing this with you i almost get one or two emails every month i'm not saying day or week every month one or two emails saying that ma'am where are the other episodes this was very interesting you explained it very well there is a kind of sense of satisfaction that comes to you when you are able to convey what you intend to do to your audience or learners hmm? so there is a kind of a kind of confidence number 3 that this visibility gives you a, a, a sense of confidence and when you work for this ye aap aise to ja ke bol nahi doge ki okay okay i am going to teach and you are not treating don't treat it lightly you have to put in a lot of hard work in order to to develop a good source good source for people ki wo khol ke dekhe acha ha okay xyz is teaching this oh her explanation is good her points are good her ability to capture the attention of audience is good so for that what have you done you have done homework ye apne aap to tapak ke nahi aayega so with that homework you gain confidence as as a person and the confidence gets manifest in your professional life so the benefits are professional the benefits are financial and the intangible outdo all sorts of benefits and this is what you must strive for that is actually development of your personality as a faculty and this is what is going to take you to heights and heights in future and i wish all of you luck for that now nrc kya karta hai coming on to the specifics of it nrc identifies subject I've just shown you like NCERT identified these subjects. The subjects ke identify होने के बाद you form PI principal investigator or course coordinator. Then they work along with SMEs because it's a big enterprise. You just can't do everything on your own and a team of reviewers. SMEs help. Say for example, this is the sociology textbook. अब हम book उठा के देखेंगे there are eight chapters. So we will say that let's divide every chapter into four modules. ओके सो यू से बहुत ज़्यादा है चैप्टर में नॉट मच सो कैन ब्रिंग इट डाउन टू टू मॉड्यूल्स सो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द सब्जेक्ट मैटर यू कैन डिसाइड देन डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द एक्सपर्टीज विद इन दस एम एज यू से ओके शीतल यू डू ग्लोबलाइजेशन ओके मानसी यू डू मानसी यू हैव डन विद मी यू नो मानसी हैज वर्क विद मी हाँ She yes, has done. Ah, Mansi has worked with me in NCERT. Yes, yes, yes. So, बोलते ही Mansi I recalled. Mansi, तुम ये chapter करो. You are going to do this on uh, tribes and family. And then the team works together. And after the team has completed writing the modules, then you come on to the reviewer. कि आपने कुछ uh, objectivity को तो compromise नहीं किया. You haven't uh, mistaked upon facts. You haven't mistaked upon Uh, chronology events and everything editing sort of review happens so the team works together in order to come to this level so this is an interesting in a, in another way resource coordinator subject area course coordinator subject matter experts and the production team and by production team i mean uh, both the writing team and the recording team and then you have module development in four quadrants which are these four quadrants now i i take you straight away to four quadrants now what are these four quadrants and to show this i'll take you back to uh, this layout now what happens that uh, you may think uh, there's no duster here yes 
you may think that uh, uh, how do I distribute? And now I'll ask you to imagine your area, your subject area where you want to give uh, a course. And then imagine ki ye particular course and how many modules can I teach? Initially, it was 40 modules. But 40 modules, suppose if you look at this course layout, it has only 18 modules and a final assessment. Now, 18 modules, what happens that uh, you may say, that okay, uh, the first week we start with is just introduction to Indian society. And why only one module? Because there's not much in this. We are introducing the learner for the first time to the subject of sociology 11th May, why? 12th May, we are just enhancing a bit of it. So introducing Indian society. Now it is up to the team and the, uh, the, the group which is forming the course that how many they want to offer. So somewhere from 25 to 18, or I must write reverse, 18 to 25 modules are enough. Because this is how it goes in a semester. Annual courses for 40 modules, that's fine. But we are treating every book as one semester because 11th May there are two books, 12th May there are two books. So in all, you have four books. So it's a semester based. First semester, second, third, and fourth. So what we have done, we have divided this into 18 modules only. And 18 module courses, courses being run for, you may say, 24 weeks, hai, yaan toh, duration 24 weeks. Hai. Ye dekho yaan pe. So how do you spread these 18 modules to 24? Aap, you can repeat. Or what you can do, one week can be given to this assignment, like assignment one. Ab, pehle kyun assignment de diya? Abhi to shuru bhi nahi hai. Just to check your understanding about sociology or society, uh, what you have learned in class 11th. Then after teaching four modules, part one, two, three, four of demographic structure, you have assignment number two. So we have spread this course only 18 modules, but into 24 weeks time. And every week is module one, then week two is assignment, then three, four, five, six, seven. You can also repeat modules. Say, for instance, if you think in maths or in physics that um, one module requires two weeks of understanding or studying or practicing or um, you know, uh, solving problem, you can repeat the module. Say, for example, module nine here, market as a social uh, institution, you part one and two, you can repeat it for two weeks or three weeks, but not more than three weeks because then it's online, it looks stale. You have to change the concept. So this is what uh, you have to see when you when you when you change the when you not change when you spread your modules across the number of weeks so every module now every remember this that there is course course has say suppose 20 modules every module one module has four components and what are those four components let me take you back to this e text self assessment resources and videos so if in case you have 20 modules you have to do 20 into 4 80 components ready 80 components mein kya ho 20 e text 20 self assessment 20 resources and 20 videos now let us see what are these individually individually when i go here uh, this is it what is e text E text is somewhere around three to three, no, three to three thousand five hundred words, written part of it. So when I say that we are talking about cultural diversity, social stratification, inequality, caste or backward caste, Adivasi and Adivasi struggle, suppose this, this particular challenges of cultural diversity, this module is a text. So when you are launching this course, at that point of time, you are writing a text. This is just like article. And this is where plagiarism and copyright is very important. That you don't pick up anybody's word. You give acknowledgement, proper referencing and everything. You write the way you write an article, the way you write e-text. So for 20 modules, you have to have 20 e-text files. And every file is around 3,500 words. It may go up 200. It may come down 200, 300 or 500. For my friends in mathematics, one derivation may be just of two page or one page. You can say, ma'am, how will I stretch it? Absolutely no need. Because you know your subject. The, the equations, this, 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 derivation, problem solving equations and all these things, they require just one and a half page. So rationally thinking, it must be. For the sciences which are more descriptive or subjects which are descriptive, it can be three and a half thousand. Remember, we are, we are offering courses to people who are at the most 
disadvantaged situations, financially, regionally, connectivity wise, um, availability of resources wise. So we have to keep it in a manageable uh, word limit. And then enrichment. What is enrichment? Enrichment, I'll come along with video also. But then this basically means that when you are preparing an e-text and you know that this has to be taught on camera also, at that point of time, for how long can you see my face? I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, 25 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, because here it is for half an hour, for half an hour. So for how long can you actually see? So you have to enrich your text. The moment I say, look at the Berlin Wall. Hmm? So you, you have... Ma maps, images, graphs, photographs, small audio, small video. So enrichment up sat sat karte chalo. Okay. So enrichment ka kya fayda hai ki when you're recording your uh, video later on in, in, in collaboration with your editor, you must be able to say ki bhaiya, uh, and I'll tell you how to do that also. So enrichment is having a, a set of resources and picture video which are going to be incorporated in the video part of it. But abhi yaha pe e-text mein ye. Now second is your resources, which means web resources. And web resources are important, but then you have to have this idea of accessibility. Ye ne ki you have to subscribe a $5,000 subscription and something. Simplest of web resources, not more than 8 to 10. Because you are again expecting the last person, the least uh, accessible area, regional, and all these, the marginalized group or those who have remained cut off from the mainstream. So for how long you can think that they will have a access to physical library? No, everything web links online and that too easily accessible, which do not require much of a data pack. Simple and associated directly with the kind of teaching or the work that you have done. Self-assessment types of questions. They are once again, at least NCRT is saying, and now progressively everything is going to MCQ. They are saying that single word questions, 12 to 15 questions. Single word in terms of fill in the blanks, uh, true or false, uh, MCQ, choose the right option, match the following, that kind of questions. And 12 to 15, which are the kind of assessments. Assignments are different, which are uh, a kind of, uh, which are a kind of assessment, which is a written one, where the student is going to write, up, uh, scan it and upload it. But then so far, Swam starts by saying that number of questions are to be limited to 12 and 15 NCRT experience. And then the questions have to be simple one word answers. And finally, uh, your web, a video. And video is something where uh, I'll share video with you to explain all these things also. And then we'll come back to uh, your idea of, first I'll show you this introductory video because this has to go with your proposal. If it please. Description. This is subject of sociology. And in this course description, we are going to talk about class 12th book one titled as Indian society. You have already been introduced to the subject of sociology in the previous class. Sociology is an interesting subject. Sociology attempts to understand nature and structure of society. In fact, I can say that sociology is an academic study or a systematic study of society. Sociologists study the social institutions. Now, this introduction is introduction that goes with the uh, proposal that you are going to make. Or proposal kaise banana hai, wo bhi main aapko abhi ek share karungi and I request all of you to... Uh, I request all of you to actually go and uh, click on to this. This is expression of interest for CEC UGC. Okay. Now do what? I'll, I'll just demonstrate how do you uh, do this part of it. This has proposals are invited from eligibility. This window opens periodically. So you have to keep checking. But we'll just test it. Scope of work kya hai? Ye jo maine aapko four quadrants mein samjhaya hai. Quadrant one, teaching. Second is referencing. Third is discussion forum. Fourth is the assessment and the video part of it. Eligibility, who is eligible? If you are into five years of teaching, very good. If you are not, start preparing now. Kyunki ultimately, you will be five years old, at least in the profession. Or find a team with which you can work. The proposal can be made by the senior and you can be part of it. And once you become five-year-old, you do it. The guidelines which I showed you, 
swam guidelines are these just go through them very carefully uh, this is uh, the the entire set of guidelines you can see the financial and other part of it ye main aapko dikha rahi thi because there is too much of emphasis on this media digital so equipment vagera kya hai and all these things just go through this and uh, the other part is the financial norms this is interesting but don't be overwhelmed by the kind of money they give so i was telling you that mota mota they give 4.5 lakh for every course for 40 hours of course total payment to smes and this is broken down into uh, 40 hour course for day day lakh this this is you can make some sense out of it although of course they uh, promise a lot but ultimately a small amount comes but then my dear friends don't run after financial benefits or any other tangible benefits the intangible are immense immense for you and trust me trust me my experience in it, in it for a long period of time now come on to submission of proposal and please experiment with this even if your subject does not exist in this i tell you how to jump across the boundary this is ongoing process currently more than 364 courses have been identified among 12 subjects so more subjects and courses will be added select a level ug select a subject uh sociology select a course the drop down menu says that you can offer these many courses so suppose uh, i say social stratification all right they say click to open syllabus here the syllabus will come here okay this course you have to teach in number of 25 to 30 or you have to design it yourself all right now when you submit a proposal registration for submitting a proposal here you have to submit your proposal your full name and everything make a uh, email every email id you get one proposal you can submit one proposal with every email id so you can do this sociology nahi if you are if you are from political science click on this select a course suppose to the friends whose subject is not mentioned here all right and through 14 subjects are mentioned here. if it's not mentioned here and even if in, so you are a sociologist and you venture into political science and see okay i can say uh, global politics pe i can do something or uh, there is something understanding global politics or understanding ambedkar this also falls somewhere on the border borderline between sociology and this understanding you never ever stop yourself to venture into interdisciplinary boundaries because it has immense benefits as a scholar so when you say that women power and politics being a sociologist you have done gender studies gender kiya hai to yahan pe aap aa sakte ho yahan pe you can say work visible work invisible work family mein gender feminism uh, patriarchy whatever just experiment yourself stretch yourself to the limits that how can i jump across the disciplinary boundaries and get benefited by this so this is how you apply for courses all of you take a screenshot of this swam inflibib net ac.in and the other sites other nrcs also which i have shown you on swam central i think uh, here on on uh, this particular site when you uh, if i open this in new link here the nrcs are available go to a respective nrc jo management mein se hai they can go here engineering pg ug uh, igno open igno is open for all but it's open learning nius again school then triple t is for engineering and ptl go to any and then look for it you have to search for it you will end up you shoot for the stars you land up on moon so you just uh, try that wherever you fit in in interdisciplinary boundaries and this is where you can actually test yourself maybe even in history or in anthropology you may find a course okay which talks about say role of women research methodology in history understanding popular culture and all these things so absolutely don't stop yourself ki mera discipline nahi hai mera course nahi hai mera area nahi hai mera specialization nahi hai absolutely not try to be interdisciplinary and connect with people even in one course if you have a ha huh, and then now coming on to how to develop this course proposal aap baad mein karna now if you have identify a course and you say i want to teach this in 20 modules form a team because indirectly and directly there is a limit to which you can actually work 
NCRT does not pay you more than seven modules, which is an indirect ceiling. Ki beta, ab seven hi likho. You are not going to be given more than seven modules because first you cannot do it. It's, it's a big thing. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not scaring you, but you really need to work hard. Okay. And the second is some universities have an internal mechanism that it looks good, patch number mil rahe every module, but some universities have again a ceiling that you cannot claim more than five modules, so six modules. So a team is always good to run the show where you identify four to five people, those who can help you to work on this. And then imagine ki main ye course kis padhane wala hu. I've shown you sociology ka, uh, this thing. The course outline is there. So you say X, you teach this part. Y, you teach this part. Z, you teach this part. And this is how all of us make a grid. And we start with e-text. Hum sab ne bana liya hai 40 modules, uh, 24 modules ka e-text bana liya hai. Paanch, paanch, che, che. Then we have done web links, this, 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 this. And then write a good proposal together, form a team of like-minded people, not very uh, lackadaisical attitude and do it. Now, coming back to my presentation, I'll bring you to the important part of it, which is uh, just one second, which is the video part of it. Now, how do you develop a video? I've shown you this video, hai na? Now I'll share enrichment wala video. Suppose I just want to look for a particular video for you. Yes, suppose I take this video. Uh, now I'll tell you how, how do you do enrichment? Let me play after this, uh, this thing. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll show you how to enrich. And enrichment is something. What do I do? Go ad free, na? Huh. I think I had to. Huh. Now, see, I am running something. Niche. The video is running, 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 running. Now, in some cases, you see me teaching. In some cases, you see a tile where you have a. Uh, so uh, what do you say headings then you have somewhere the greater information like this and somewhere you have uh, mm, i'll start showing you pictures and images will come about see maps hmm? somewhere like this now this is called as enrichment and how do you enrich suppose mere paas ek document khula hai. this is i do here i use color coding pink may be presenter all right this may be a uh, heading yellow maybe heading then you do this uh, you can say this is a uh, heading this is the tile which has to come and then you say that this is where i want to re move red and picture color coding ho gaya ab aap kya karoge aap apne editor ko bologe ki dekho jahan pink hai wahan presenter hai yellow mein aapko headline dikhana hai green mein aapko tile dikhana hai pura ka pura information se and wherever there is red i am going to give you a image or a picture or what picture ka url laga do. this is called as an uh, enrichment okay so have two book two files parallelly ek to plain text hai dusra you can have a text which is enriched so that when you go for recording of this video at that point of time you have uh, you know uh, you have this uh, uh, this ready material ki mujhe kahan pe kya karna hai and in conversation with your uh, editor you can do this now see how i have shown made use of maps ab main ye sara ka sara bolu azerbaijan georgia this 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 so this will be difficult now this is there for the student because he is also learning they can stop you here acha moldova then kyrgyz lithuania turkmenistan this 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 all these were earlier social soviet socialist republics now they have become these many countries and then show a, a, a map map which shows this other republics and, and this is how it broke down so this is how you actually make use of maps and interactives this was earlier then this came then 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 gradually uh, these many things happen and then they became part of the eu ye interaction hai. this is enrichment ab lagatar mera chehra nahi dekh paoge beta because i am not a uh, glamorous model who, whom you can actually see for a long period of time so isko interactive dekho jaise arrow aa gaya ye aa gaya hmm? along with this now this is interesting i was telling you no main dikhati hu aapko 
four different parts. Now, as you can see in this map of Berlin city, on right hand side, you see the East Berlin, which is the Soviet sector. On the left hand side, you see three sectors, the French sector, the British sector, and the American sector, which were the part of West Berlin. Now, in the second map, we'll see this blue line that encircles the Western part of the city is the Berlin Wall. And the Berlin Wall stood from 1961 to 1989. Now, in this picture, we can see the wall being constructed. The construction of wall is underway, and you can see laborers working on this construction site. Now, this is a picture of the Berlin Wall, which is dividing the east from the west. And this view is from the West Berlin side. And you can see graffiti art on the wall. This is taken in 1986. And on the left hand side, you see a brown patch that runs along the wall. And this is called as death strip, where the guards had a standing shoot to kill orders against anybody whosoever tried to escape. Many people in order to escape the tyranny of the communist regime on and it, it uh, made quite Western alliances. USSR 1907 pollution was led by Valdemir. Now, this is enrichment. This is how you make your work effective. And the other part of the, uh, uh, the work is with the presentation. And this is where I'll end because I've already uh, taken 40, 45 minutes. And uh, how, do you, how do you actually prepare for uh, this work? Now, uh, as, a, as a teacher, once again, remember that you have to remain very interactive and engaging with your students. Now, how do you, how do you engage? If I start, I, I'll demonstrate this to you, you know, because this is a spontaneous lecture where I'm, I'm talking to you and uh, I have a liberty of using, you know, I know, yes, you know, looking this side, that side. But when you look at this video, my entire focus is only fixed upon, you know, if I play this in the, the background, it's, it's, socialism it's is basically I'm just looking at the camera. So how do you learn to face camera? Just last two, three minutes, I'll just tell you. First is fixing your gaze. Aapko apna gaze fix karna hai. Gaze ka matlab ki mein, jab, when I started, I, our eyes roll. You know, they either do dekhne ki aadat hoti. Class mein bhi we see, abhi bhi lectures mein bhi keep on doing this. But here you do not have that liberty. And your eyes are, your body may move, everything move, but eyes are fixed. So how do you do that? Initially, you put a a point or a hang a camera, uh, hang anything, a small object, clock or a uh, remote control and keep looking at it. Aise. Abhi main apne camera ko dekhi, this small dot here. So keep on looking at this. Once you think that for 120 seconds, my gaze is fixed. Now start speaking anything with the object because camera is an object only. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's not a something. And I tell you one thing, in, in, in studio, you have 10, 15 people, koi light fix kar raha hai, koi kuch kar raha hai, koi kuch kar raha hai. And all of them are not bothered about what you are going to talk about. But you get conscious of, okay, 15 log hai. So you have to have this, this, this homework already done. First is my gaze fixed. Second is my interaction with this point only because they may dance in front of you, but you have to have your gaze fixed. Huh? So, you have to start with bolna. Now, bolna is not It will not come that you have to come to the first day and Absolutely not. Just become camera friendly. Like when you start swimming, you touch the water. You don't jump into 10 feet right on the day one. So, start with camera. Anything, whatever is comfortable to you. You may sing a song, national anthem, or kai bari mein mazak mein kehti hu, namaskar dosto, swagat hai aapka kaun bane hai, karod pati mein, aaj mere saamne hot seat per baithe hai, pratyush, pratyush yaha per aakar, kaisa lag raha hai, 25 lakh rupay ka prashna aap jeech. Yeh, just, just speak anything. Kuch bhi bolo, but non-stop bolo. Nonsense ni, non-stop bolo. Ab kya karna hai, jab bolna aa gaya hai. First is gaze, second is speech. Jab speech or gaze mein fluency aagai hai, when you have started touching and feeling the water, now start speaking the subject. I'm a sociologist. I'm going to talk about sociology to you. Ab thoda thoda sensibility lekar ao. Kyunki aap ek dam se jump nahi kar sakte. Aap derivation ek dam mein nahi padha sakte ho. Thik hai? But if you read, say for example, I read something. I'll, I'll open something and read. My gaze will be there. 
देयर एजुकेशनल अचीवमेंट्स आर बेटर एंड ऑफ अ हाई क्वालिटी आपकी स्पॉन्टेनिटी नहीं आप कितना भी छुपाने की कोशिश करो कैमरा कैचेज इट आपकी आईज ऐसे 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 होती है सो हाउ डू यू ओवरकम दिस सपोज इट्स एन एपिसोड ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव मिनट्स हाउ डू यू ओवरकम ब्रेक इट इन टू फाइव और सिक्स कंपोनेंट्स कि चार चार मिनट का नॉन स्टॉप मुझे छह कंपोनेंट्स रखने हैं सो ब्रेक डाउन योर कंटेंट इन टू सिक्स पार्ट ठीक है सपोज यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्ट्रेटिफिकेशन और उसके बहुत ही क्रिस्प पॉइंटर्स बनाओ आई एम नॉट हैविंग दैट बुक एंड आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू इवन वेस्ट फाइव से फाइव सिक्स सेकेंड्स फॉर यू बट आई शो यू समथिंग हेव सपोज आपको थ्योरी ऑफ डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजेक्शन करानी है माई पेन इज ऑल्सो गिवन डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजेक्शन सो थ्री स्टेजेस में है फर्स्ट स्टेज में डेथ रेट और बर्थ रेट दोनों हाई है सेकेंड में आपका बर्थ रेट हाई है और डेथ रेट डेथ रेट कम है एंड द थर्ड में आपका बर्थ रेट और डेथ रेट दोनों तीनों दोनों कम हो गया है ये पॉइंटर्स हैं ओके दीज आर जस्ट पॉइंटर्स अब ये आप अपने सामने रख लो एंड यू नो दैट यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन दीज पॉइंटर्स अलोंग विद कपल ऑफ अदर थिंग्स से इन 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 फोर मिनट्स ओके सो हाउ डू यू बिगिन नाउ अभी मैं आपको डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजेक्शन बता रही हूँ तो आई एम डूइंग हा ना इधर उधर इधर बट नाउ सपोज आई एम फेसिंग द कैमरा कैमरा लाइट एक्शन फोर थ्री टू वन वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू दिस वीडियो सीरीज टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट डेमोग्राफिक ट्रांजेक्शन इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट सोशल डेमोग्राफी जैसे टॉक करेगा वो कहेगा कट इट ठीक है जब आपको कट इट हो जाएगा दो तीन बार आपका फंबल और कट इट हो गया तो आप खुद ही नर्वस हो जाओगे वेरी गुड सेंटेंस वो लगता है यार अब ये तो लिखा नहीं हुआ था मैं तो बोल गया था अब मैं दोबारा से इसको कैसे रिप्रोड्यूस करूँ सो प्लीज बी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग कॉन्फिडेंट डू योर होमवर्क एज मच एज पॉसिबल बिकॉज योर होमवर्क गेट्स रिफ्लेक्टेड ऑन योर इन योर कॉन्फिडेंस वेन यू आर सेंग दिस Initially, I shared with all my colleagues here. I was also very scared, and I did not move much. He said, "You have to be scared. Please do some actions and all these things." And gradually, it comes in your body, in your speech. So let's begin once again. 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 but population is not just simply counting number of people population can also be analyzed from various dimensions and perspectives one interesting way is to understand it how it is distributed socially this means that how can you construct social categories or identify social categories within populations it can be on the basis of gender it can be on the basis of caste religion community language or ethnicity these are called as the aspects of social demography if we talk about demography and change in population there are many interesting perspectives and theories one such theory is called as theory of demographic transition the theory talks about three stages in the change of population of any given community or society the first stage says that in the first stage ab yahan se i had a fumble so i i just cut it down here now when i'm speaking on camera there is no this 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 you know you know that no i know i don't know aapko you have to go non stop and this is what is required so have your points have your confidence do your homework have a team where you actually prepare so well that your delivery your content is engaging okay and finally coming back to my presentation here uh, i think i have uh, yes 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 this was it or yes and finally i would say that you know there are certain rules there are certain netiquettes which are called as we are we are in the with the cyber world and i told you on the very first day that you do not know everybody switches off the camera you may be talking so passionately and everybody is on minding their own business so you you have to be very careful in the cyber world that uh, even in a spontaneous lecture that i am doing to you and you are listening to me as 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 audience 
you have to follow a certain protocol, a set of rules and netiquettes, which are very important. Some of them are listed here. Please respect the speaker as well as the uh, participants also. It's not that you are you know, this is, this is not, the, not the way you are expected. Although, of course, people do, and I just can't have a control over everybody's indri. When, when you are in your control, you can't control anybody else. But then still, remember that we are, we are still in a very formal setting. We are still in a very formal group, and we have to adhere with the standards which are expected from an audience as well as from a uh, speaker. So minimize as much as background noises, knowledge, uh, you know, movement and all these things. Although, of course, I understand there are constants. Sometimes you, it's absolutely inevitable. But I'm what I'm saying is strive for it as much as possible. Okay? Because you are here also engaging with the audience. And audience is a scanner. The moment you enter the class... You look at 60 students, 60 scanners are running. Oh, ye madam, hai, kya padhayenge, kaise padhayenge, kapade to dekho, muh to dekho, shakal. You have a different kind of audience these days. And how you connect, it's only your intellect, your talent, your ability, your connectivity, your interaction, your communication, your, 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 your strength to engage the audience, which ultimately pays. Otherwise, you, you can be an ordinary person. People will click on to, no, 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 boring. Hai. Chalo, hata do. When we went for a, a big session with the then Minister of uh, Education, HRD, uh, Prakash Javedkarji, and he, he played a video and he said, I will two videos for you, you will see which one is good. And there, there was a stark difference and I can, I can enact that for you. One video, tha, this was on photography. And he played one video and in that uh, there was one person and he said, hello students. Welcome to this course in videography. I am going to tell you about the ways in which you can. This was one. And the other one was very interesting. And this was, hey, welcome to this course in videography. I'm going to shoot you, not shoot you exactly, but tell you how to shoot the subject out there. Do I look nice from this side or this side? And suddenly, if you have to opt between these two, you will certainly go for the second one. So Prakash sir said that, you know, you, you just make your, make your stuff interesting, make your stuff engaging so that people listen to you. You know, you have to leave your, your impression, your imprints. Otherwise, a wide variety of stuff is existing. How would people explore and would look for your videos? And this is where uh, somewhere we have to be so committed to our task, do our homework, be equipped, ready, uh, do so much of, you know, background work. So that when what is visible is something which is impressionable. Thank you so much for your attention and I'll, I'm open to questions now. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing a valuable uh, information with us. Ma'am, can we start uh, query round? Okay. Thank you. Is not coming. One, one second. Now, ma'am, Dr. Janki is asking disability studies as a MOOC, how does it develop since they are inter interrelated with almost every academy? Uh, I'm repeating it. Disability studies as a MOOC, how does one develop? Since um, ma'am, since they are interrelated with almost every academic. Your voice. Ma'am, you are, uh, you, are you are on mute. mute yes, I'm on mute. I know, but then kindly read the questions a bit clearly. Uh, I can't see questions. Disability, disability studies as a uh, as in MOOC. How does one can develop it? Uh, and. Uh, uh, and since they are interrelated with almost every academy, so she's asking about disability studies to develop as a MOOC course. Maybe. Okay, okay. Like the, the, the subject remains the disability studies and uh, then how do we develop? Yes. I can't see the chat in my box. So that's what I was thinking. But see, Janki, 
uh, I, I understand this question in two ways. One is the subject matter uh, for disability studies and the other one for the disabled group. For, uh, for disability studies, you can uh, add into or make this as part of, uh, say, uh, uh, in sociology, if you have uh, a particular topic under which you talk of um, marginalization, exclusion, and in that particular case, in that particular topic, you can make a subtopic of disability and uh, other things. Otherwise, if you launch a course of yourself in which you can say that, you know, ideas related to or concepts uh, of uh, exclusion marginalization in that you can have a uh, half or three fourth of your course devoted to disability studies or else uh, if i'm not if i'm uh, if I, I don't think uh, disability as as a uh, technological uh, issue you are talking about so that way uh, whatever uh, the technical needs to spread this to disabled group differently able people is a separate story but uh, you can connect it in sociology you can do it in to certain extent uh, the other social sciences also historically you can understand it or in the field of economics you can do so i i think uh, i'm understanding it partly but then if in case this is what you intend to say, then you can actually make it part of socio sociology. And in sociology, sociology of discrimination or marginalization, exclusion, and such areas within which you can offer a course. Okay, ma'am. Um, the I'm next not, question. Why I'm not able to see my chat box? I don't know, ma'am. Uh, I think, uh, ma'am, I want to tell you, Around thousands are messages here in the chat box. Two thousand four hundred, and it is increasing, increasing, increasing. It is it is two thousand four hundred eighty ninety uh, twenty five hundred. So it is increasing, ma'am. That's why I think. Acha, acha, maybe my system is slow <laughs> to capture all that. Uh, I hope I was able to convey uh, my friends what I wanted to say, hai na? Ma'am, I just uh, sorry to interrupt you. Actually, oh. we are facing some technical difficulties from here. That's why you are not able to maybe, uh, you know, uh, provide you with uh, all the uh, connectivity. Uh, so what I can see from here is that. Um, ha okay, one more question. So I'm I'm going to uh, intervene here. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. no. Um, so there is another question that is coming. Hmm. Uh, that is uh, how to become a member of your team for the MOOC course. I've completed my PhD in political science in 2021. So it's a wonderful question. So please respond to that. So I'm uh, meanwhile finding more questions for you. Achha, this, is an op this is an invitation to all of you. I'm connected to NCRT for last 10 years now. Uh, Mansi was at one point of time before she left for Golgotia. Uh, she was also part of very active member of my team. In fact, second lead, Zai, Mansi was two, I, two OIC, officer in charge. And uh, I will introduce, uh, send your name, your area of specialization. You know, once I asked a group to send their uh, details. Hello, I am uh, this and uh, email. Manika, yeah, Ravi, you want me to compile a directory of all the people? Please make it, make my life easy, you know. Uh, your name, your area of specialization, your phone number, and your email ID. I am on a WhatsApp group which looks for um, uh, textbook development team and all these things almost every day. Almost every day. Okay. So I will introduce you to the respective group. Fine. Number two, this is not a guarantee that you will get a call tomorrow. You may get a call even immediately or may never ever in your life. Please, <laughs> I'm being very clear about it. Some people have got it, some haven't got it. Depending upon the requirement, the agency will contact you. But at least your name will get entered into the list of resource persons. Okay? So what I'm saying is that please send it to us very formally. Your name, your area of specialization, sub areas of specialization, then your uh, affiliation, your uh, email address, your phone number, your connectivity, everything. Please put as many details as possible. I will, from my side, I'll get you connected or introduce you to the group. You may receive call uh in case you receive it and you are all young people you know i want to say one thing never say no to anything at this stage in your life okay at this stage it is just the learning stage you know nobody dies of hard work trust me <laughs> nobody dies of hard work you always you always tend to gain out of it so you become so confident over a period of time i tell you you will not even fear your own death 
मैं तो इमोटल हो गया हूँ मुझे क्या जुड़ना है इससे है ना सो जस्ट हैव दैट कॉन्फिडेंस की येस आई कैन डू इट ये शीतल यू कैन डू इट ये मानसी आई कैन डू इट यू नो सो हैव दैट कॉन्फिडेंस एंड टेस्ट यूर सेल्फ फेलियर ही तो आएगा ना आने दो आने दो अब वो गोन आर दो डेज ना कि एक ही मछली है एक ही तीर है एक ही आंख है और एक ही तो शॉर्ट में मारनी ना अब तो मेनी मच्छीज आर देयर मेनी तीर आर देयर यू नो कीप ऑन शूटिंग कहीं तो हिट होगा एंड हैव कमिटमेंट एंड डेडिकेशन टू योर वर्क ये नहीं कि अब मतलब कल चलता काम कर दिया पैच वर्क कर दिया ना दैट गेट्स रिफ्लेक्टेड ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सो डू योर हार्ड वर्क विद फुल शिद्दत कमिटमेंट एंड Sky is the limit. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> as a as a faculty development program convener, I am just pushing this envelope. That I just do not want you to have a certificate at the end. वो तो वैसे भी मिल जाएगा कहीं से भी, है ना? But the qualitative outcome, the significant thing is that you have कुछ कुछ substantial gain करके जाओ यहाँ से. Hmm. So oh, I. Mean, yeah, I'm, sure. Because even I, I'm I'm the first follower of you know you principal. I think I definitely. Ah, uh, just to inform you, we are I think ah uh, loaded with questions, but someone has spammed the chat box. We're not able to see anything in the chat box right now. So what we can do? What we can do? We'll just pick up your ah uh, questions relevant for you. Ah, uh, we'll email it to you, and we have ah uh, our uh, Telegram group will uh, you know shortly uh, connect to participants with the responses that required. I um, can't see any chat. Any chat in my yes, box? Yes, it no. is not visible now. However, there are. now 2500 messages that we actually can count here but we cannot uh, read it now so uh, i i do not know maybe the fdp is too getting too heavy for some people to <laughs> digest so it's okay uh, so let us now uh, i think uh, move on to next session or even one one uh, yes uh, excuse me ma'am uh, ma'am because you are the host now so can you make a uh, i i make you yes. host because uh, ma'am there is some feedback coming here Achy. you are the host i think ha yes I, I, we I, are actually I, facing I, problem so make uh, wasim sir the host so that he can handle it now acha okay I'll also go. uh meanwhile i i have a request ma'am i okay i have one personal query here if you ha. can answer ha. uh there is a, a kind of uh, i i would say a uh, prejudice about uh, you know private universities applying for a uh, funded proposal or uh, you know trying to reach out to this um, ncert and this uh, government bodies but certain blockage are there in the first layer of interaction with public universities or are uh, to be deemed universities so in that case i mean what do you uh, i mean how do you basically uh, like to suggest to those people who are working with private universities and they are aspiring to be part of this ncert project or other government um, funded project see one good thing over the years that has happened is that the distinction between the private and the public is getting blurred uh, in hamara zamana i would say in my zamana there was a kind of hedge कि आप गवर्नमेंट में नहीं पढ़ा रहे हो तो योर प्राइवेट यूनिवर्सिटी एक्सपीरियंस वुड नॉट बी काउंटेड एंड ऑल दिस वी हैव फेस बट योर जनरेशन इज नॉट गोइंग टू फेस दिस प्रॉब्लम नंबर 1 नंबर 2 थैंक्स टू दिस डिजिटल रेवोल्यूशन आल्सो दैट इट्स इट्स नो लोंगर द कन्वेंशनल क्लासरूम टीचिंग कि आप बोर्ड पे लिखे जा रहे हो पढ़ाए जा रहे हो चॉक एंड टॉक बिजनेस इज ओवर यू कैन आल्सो एक्चुअली डेवलप योर योर पर्सनल इंप्रिंट नंबर 3 that if in case you do not have you know uh, uh, this association with a subject matter expert or any nrc or you are not yet ready or ripe to launch your course on swayam okay then what you can do you can test yourself or ab test kaise karoge dekho main aapko abhi i just showed you about this uh, social demography wala na all of you at any point of time next week zyada der mat karna you pick up a small area small corner in your house and uh, sit silently or everybody has some forte hum log sab teachers hain you think about the area ki ye my best area hai no matter quantum physics hai ya uh, gandhi ji pe hai ambedkar pe hai ya madan mohan malviya ki koi writing hai you think ki this is my area this is my best area on which i can speak for 10 minutes non stop okay now do what put your camera aur uske aage aap bolo you just speak 
आप उसके सामने बैठो फॉर टेन मिनट्स टेक दिस टाइम आउट ऑन संडे मंडे वेन एवर यू कैन गेट एंड डू दैट अब जैसे आप देखोगे ना यू प्लेट फॉर योर सेल्फ योर कंजम्पन ओनली एंड यू आर योर बेस्ट क्रिटिक मुझे कोई दूसरा कहेगा तो मुझे अच्छा ये कह रहा है वो कह रहा है यू नो यू आर वेरी ह्यूमन आई एम टेलिंग यू दिस इज वेरी ह्यूमन अच्छा ये क्यों कह रहा है कैसे कह रहा है मैं तो नहीं मान रहा ये वो है बट आई नो माई सेल्फ वेर आर यू फॉल्टरिंग शीतल दिस इज नॉट द वे यू शुड बी टॉकिंग ऑन स्क्रीन कम ऑन यू हैव टू बी फम्बल फ्री फॉर एटलीस्ट थ्री मिनट्स which is only 180 seconds count 180 go on social demography once again you can do it so what you i tell you you gain confidence through self exercise do this try yourself kisi ko dikhana dikhana nahi hai kuch bhi apne liye banana go back to the same work one week later within 5 weeks aap apne mein change dekhna you just observe change in yourself once you think now i have gained particular thing either alone or with team एक या दो तीन चार नॉट मोर देन फाइव सिक्स बिकॉज टू मेनी कुक्स ऑल्सो स्पॉइल सो गो विद द टीम हैव योर ओन यूट्यूब का छोटा सा प्रोग्राम यू कैन लॉन्च इट दीज डिस्ट तो इट्स सो इजी टू गो ऑन पॉडकास्ट ऑन यूट्यूब ऑन दीज इन दैट एंड वेट फॉर टाइम टू कम वन डे सर्टनली योर डोर बेल विल रिंग इफ इन केस यू हैव जेनुअन वे ऑफ डेमोन्स्ट्रेटिंग योर पोटेंशियल मॉडर्न में क्या है कई बार वी गेट you know frustrated and get ho nahi raha ho nahi raha ho nahi raha you know uh, people with this 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 are enjoying nahi aisa nahi hai everything comes with the time everything comes with the kind of work that you have put in and if you are a star you will certainly shine manse in the group i want to say you know that we become very quickly hopeless because we are part of a pop culture कल जिम गया आज मसल क्यों नहीं आ रहा आज कट क्यों नहीं आ रहा यू नो कल डाइटिंग किया अरे दो किलो कम क्यों नहीं हो रहा यू वेट फॉर वेट फॉर टाइम यू नो एंड आज इंग्लिश सीखनी शुरू की कल क्यों नहीं फ्लुएंसी आ रही अरे बाबा अच्छे अच्छों को नहीं आती है आज संस्कृत सीखनी शुरू की कल श्लोक क्यों नहीं बोला यू हैव टू प्रैक्टिस दिस इज एवोल्यूशनरी रेवोल्यूशनरी कुछ नहीं होता है <laughs> सिर्फ वो तो मारकाट मचती है सो आई एम जस्ट एज एज अ टीचर एज एन एल्डर टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम जस्ट शेयरिंग दिस कि वेट हैव पेशेंस रिहर्स डू वर्क डू योर थर वर्क है ना फिर आता है and and i think i'm clear about it <laughs> very thank clear. you so much <laughs> it's been wonderful having you here ma'am with us uh, i think uh, all your sessions have been really uh, you know wonderful and we have learned a lot from your deliberations um, we all are so grateful to you for uh, you know coming and sharing your views with us uh, i think we should uh, okay pratu sir has a मल्टीमीडिया स्टाफ uh when you pick uh, some photographs or some maps from here or there or uh, so uh, i have uh, come across some issues of copyright mm-hmm. uh, and uh, youtube sends you some reminder or some warning thing and uh, uh, it happens and then you go on to like you know like uh, it ha- they also send you the the number contact uh, contract uh, thing of that person who has obje- raised an objection to uh, the stuff that i have uploaded mm. but uh, like my stuff uh, could uh, was removed because of some petty issue that i thought i in my opinion that was petty uh-huh. so how to avoid that those kind of things see there are two three things uh, mostly your uh, copyright issue and this dhamki wala email you get so you get only when you have uh, picked up a video Hmm, आप पूरा वीडियो लेके डालते हो है ना एंड वीडियो का इशू इज रियली ट्रेसेबल माय माय कंटेंशन हियर इज दैट दैट व्हेन यू क्रिएट समथिंग यू सर्टेनली बोरो मैं आई एम नॉट राइटर ऑफ सोशल डेमोग्राफी थ्योरी और नाइदर यूएसएसआर का वन इज दैट व्हेन यू आर थ्रू स्वयं प्लेटफॉर्म देन द एंटायर कॉपीराइट बिकम स्वयं बट वहां पे आपको रेफरेंसिंग जरूर है ठीक है इफ यू आर गोइंग प्राइवेटली ऑन योर यूट्यूब वीडियो Then certainly you have to be very sure कि आप कौन सा उठा रहे हो ठीक है 
उसमे भी वेन यू आर डूइंग दिस यू अब नाउ रिकॉल माई एंटायर डेढ़ घंटे का डिस्कशन माई वन एंड हाफ आवर कहीं पे भी फॉर मोर देन फोर्टी फाइव मिनट मैंने आपको कहीं नहीं छोड़ा hmm. ना एक स्लाइड पे छोड़ा ना मैंने आपको एक वीडियो पे छोड़ा वो नॉट लाइक कि भाई मेरा वीडियो चल रहा है तुम देखो मैं दिखा सकती हूँ तुम्हें बीस मिनट बट वाई वाई डू वेस्ट टाइम ऑफ टू हंड्रेड फिफ्टी पीपल इफ यू आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन दैट टॉपिक माई लेसन इज दैट कि आपको ना बड़ा क्विकली आजकल तो न्यूज पे भी ये है कि वहां पे टाइमर लगा देते हैं थर्टी फाइव सेकेंड्स आपका पहला रिएक्शन इसके प्रति क्या है विच मीन्स की क्या कहना क्या चाह रहे हैं कि योर अटेंशन योर स्पेन टाइम योर स्क्रीन टाइम एज टू चेंज क्विकली चेंज द स्लाइड चेंज द फ्रेम क्विकली सो वहां पे आप क्या है कि देर आर टू वेज उसमें से छोटा सा लो एंड राइट टू द कंसर्न टीम कि भाई वी आर बोरोइंग दिस डू यू हैव एनी ऑब्जेक्शन इसीलिए को होमवर्क कहते हैं प्रत्युष क्योंकि हम सब कुछ करके डाल दें फिर किसी ने ऑब्जेक्शन रेज कर दिया तो फिर सारा अंडू करना पड़ता है राइट राइट है ना तो आप डालने से पहले इतना बड़ा लो मत नहीं तो वो तो उसी का ही है अदरवाइज यू जस्ट अडेप्ट फ्रॉम देयर ट्रांसफॉर्म इट एड सम न्यू एलिमेंट्स टू इट एंड देन uh and then uh, actually produce your content it mm-hmm. might have some references but it would look new and it would no finger would be raised on it okay so there is one interesting question uh, yes ma'am there is one question and uh, this is about is it possible to develop a course hmm. for which the subject is not categorized uh-huh. so question? you have mentioned this i am still not very clear what is the process for sending the proposal for the same doc by uh-huh. dr sonia ha uh-huh. ha dr sonia Uh, it's 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 a very uh, pertinent question because उसमें कुछ ही courses हैं only fourteen subjects are there. My friends from JNU Russian language they also had a same problem कि मैम हमारे तो language नहीं है so I asked all of them and you too also सोनिया ये करो आप उसमें जाके sociology या जो भी अब which subject are you from अगर आप type करके मुझे immediately बता दो तो suppose I'm assuming कि आप जैसे language है या कोई subject है वहाँ नहीं है तो पहले तो आप देखो कि मैं कौन सा closest disciplinary boundary में फॉल कर रहा हूँ या कर रही हूँ कर रहा हूँ कर रही हूँ है ना सो वन इज दिस द सेकेंड इज दैट कि चूज एनी आर्बिट्रेरी सब्जेक्ट आप चूज कर लो एनरोल करो उसमें और आप फॉर्मेट देख लो ठीक है फॉर्मेट में क्या है कोर्स का टाइटल है कोर्स का फ्रॉम नर्सिंग नर्सिंग में है अच्छा ठीक है हाँ सोनिया वॉट यू डू यू आई थिंक यू विल बी कनेक्टेड टू एनसीआर टी या जो मेडिकल काउंसिल को देख रहा है वो वो एरियाज में होगा है ना सो वन इज आप कोर्स का ब्रॉडर आउटलाइन देख लो कि लोग क्या क्या मांग रहे हैं लुक एट दी फॉर्म एंड दिस इज आई टेल माई स्टूडेंट जिस दिन दे क्लियर देयर यू जी सी नेट आई आज दिन की एक ना प्रोफेसरशिप का फॉर्म डाउनलोड कर लो एंड स्टार्ट फिलिंग द खन्नाज कि इसमें क्या भरना है इसमें क्या भरना है जिसमें भी नन रहता है स्टार्ट वर्किंग ऑन दिस सो यू डाउनलोड दी फॉर्म एंड स्टार्ट फिलिंग इट और जो जो रेलिवेंट कैटेगरीज हैं वो भर के अपना प्रपोजल तैयार कर लो नाउ यू राइट टू देम एज अ सेपरेट फाइल अटैच दैट आई एम डॉक्टर सोनिया आई एम एन एक्सपर्ट इन दिस आई विश टू प्रपोज अ कोर्स इन दिस दिस प्लीज फाइंड अटैच द डिटेल्स ऑफ द कोर्स एज पर द फॉर्मेट अवेलेबल ऑनलाइन एंड दिस इज द इंट्रोडक्टरी वीडियो अटैच हेयर For, uh, 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 the complete course proposal is attached here with. However, I cannot go formally because the subject area is not existing in the drop-down window. I request you to kindly consider the course or give me an appointment to discuss the relevant issues with you. Simple. They will write back to you. Two weeks me reply nii aaya. Phir bhejo. In continuation to my previous email, kindly find attached. I am looking forward to your reply. Phir nii aaya. Phir bhejo. Three times nii aaya. Fix an appointment. knock their door <laughs> they will certainly answer you <laughs> one day so you have to have that way of connecting and do this chitti patri bina uske koi verbal kuch nahi chalta hai yeah hmm? i think that will work for her hmm. uh, uh i think uh, we are running short of time ma'am so uh, we are ending the session now we will uh, and and again uh, thank you so much uh for your uh, talk now uh, participants uh, dear participants we are going to resume the session at uh, 145 it was supposed to be done at 130 but uh, we are uh, acha one more question so uh, ma'am can i just take one more last question still people are asking ma'am can i ask one more question people are asking uh, any question. pertinent question ha huh? yes uh the person is uh, barkati bushra okay uh, so she is asking uh, i did a course on research methodology from swam but i haven't 
received the certificate or even unable to download could you please help me if any idea i don't know if it is relevant nee, the Barkati, person has done mooc course barkati you have to you barkati you have to uh, contact the uh, resource coordinator under whom you have done this course ncrt se kiya aictc kiya and uh, uh, and with whom you have done and why you have not been able to kyunki wo technical issues are dealt by the technical team um, i think there is an account also when ah, you register for the to course it comes that. to your account only and acha igno se kiya hai aapne so you have to contact the team at igno and the course coordinator if you remember the course coordinator uh, whose name is uh, uh, there and you can write a personal email to him they can forward it to the concerned technical team because dekho ये काम छोटा नहीं है इसमें इतने लोग इन्वॉल्व हैं इतने लोग इन्वॉल्व हैं यू नो कि फ्रॉम दी हेड ऑफ दी एनआरसी अप अंटिल द पर्सन हु इज साइनिंग योर चेक सो सो मेनी पीपल आर इन्वॉल्व इट्स नॉट अ सिंगल मैन आर्मी अ ग्रुप ऑफ कंटिजेंट वर्क्स ऑन दिस सो टेक्निकल टीम वुड बी एबल टू हेल्प यू और बट यू विल गेट इट डोंट वरी योर एनरोलमेंट नंबर इज देयर इट इज इमोटल okay thank you so with this uh, we are uh, ending the session here we have to again uh, meet uh, with you all at 145 kindly uh, join us back thank you once again everybody bye 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 nice talking to all of you thank you ma'am
Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Ranju Lal, Assistant Professor in the Department of Psychology at Gilgotia's University. I'm here today to welcome you all in the third day of FDP for 11th session, and I'm the moderator for the session. From this session onwards, we will be learning how to organize, analyze, and interpret research data. For this, many softwares are available online or offline. Here in this FDP, we will be learning two softwares that is R and SPSS. In this particular session, we will be learning that how to install R software, how to use descriptive statistics and how to create graphs in R. This session will be conducted in two parts. In the first part, that will be uh, one, of, one and a half hour. The expert will teach us the theoretical concept of the software. And after that, there will be a practice session of the software for almost one hour, where queries will also be taken. It gives me immense pleasure to invite Dr. Shalesh Kossal sir today to make us understand the fundamentals and basic functionality of our software before calling Dr. Shalesh sir for his valuable sessions. I would like to take privilege to introduce sir to each one of us. Dr. Shalesh Kossal sir is an associate professor at Department of Business Administration, University of Lucknow. He holds a PhD, NET, MBA, and BE. He has been invited on a large number of occasions as a resource person and delivered lectures on research methodology. He has published a large number of research papers in various national and international journals. His area of specialization is marketing management, statistics, research methodology, and operations research. He has high proficiency in the statistical softwares such as SPSS, AMOS, Process Macro, Smart PLS, eViews, and R. He has recorded and also uploaded more than 100 videos, video lectures on YouTube in the same field. Now, I would like to call Dr. Shalesh sir to start his session and make us advantageous with his knowledge on our software. Sir, I would request you to please enlighten us with your thank, words. <clears throat> thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Most welcome, sir. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants. So uh, today we will discuss uh, the applications of our software in social science research. Uh, so it, uh, the R software, basically it is a free software. We can download it. Now you can see, now you can see how to install the, uh, the software R and R Studio. In the first uh, uh, step, we install the R software. It's a link of R software, or you just simply write uh, uh, the download R software in a Google. Okay. So here I am showing you the Google. You just uh, you can see here. I copy and paste the link, and then. So after that, uh, we can install the download R.12, this. After downloading it, then we will copy the R Studio. R Studio. So the R Studio, the link of R Studio, we will copy and download in our the, uh, desktop or laptop okay now it's it now you can see the uh, r studio so we can download the r studio and how to download the r, r studio i have shared the link in this link you can learn it's a video 
you can learn how to install the R and R Studio software in a, your computer. So this link I am sharing you. It's a video for how to install the R software. You just click it and you can follow some instruction given by the uh, researcher. Now in the first step, we install the R basic and then R studio. Once we install the R software, then it will look like this. You can see here the R software. It is, I think it is visible to you. So in the, there are four pane. In the first pane, we write our script. Basically R software, it is the script based software it means before writing, uh, before applying any statistical tool and technique, we write the script of that particular uh, the, the tool. For example, we want to install the, uh, we want to apply one sample t-test. So before applying the one sample t-test, we need to install the package of, uh, uh, the package of, uh, the one sample t test okay so uh, we through the uh, r software we write our script here you can write the script of the particular uh, the graph if you want to make the histogram bar plot pie chart uh, the error bar chart or any graph then First of all, we should install the package. So more than 10,000 packages available in our software. So before applying any statistical tool, for example, I want to apply the multiple regression analysis in my research paper, multiple regression analysis. So before applying it, I will install the package of multiple regression analysis and then write the script. Script means coding of the multiple regression analysis and then I will perform it and then get the output. So uh, the today we will learn how to explore our data. Basically social science research, there are two uh, types of uh, data in social science research. One is uh, the quantitative data and another is qualitative data. So we can divide uh, social science research into the two part. The first part, the, uh, the research, the quantitative research, the first research is quantitative uh, research and second is qualitative uh, research, qualitative uh, research. So the, we present quantitative research in terms of numbers and qualitative research in words. Quali qualitative research types of the qualitative research like uh, uh, narrative research, narrative research, phenomenological research, phenomenological research, ethnography, ethnography, Grounded theory, grounded theory, and case study. So these are qualitative research. Now my focus would be quantitative research. In a quantitative research, how to explore our data by using the descriptive statistics, descriptive statistics, and then how to create the graphs, different types of graph like histogram, a uh, box plot, box plot, pie chart, pie chart, pie chart, scattered diagram, scattered diagram, and so on. Okay, so we start with the uh, the graphs. Basically, graphs. So before graph, we start our lecture with descriptive uh, statistics. When we analyze our data, we need to understand our uh, data. So through descriptive statistics, we can learn about the central tendency. Central tendency means mean, median, mod. Then second is uh, measures of uh, uh, dispersion, measures of uh, dispersion. And third is distribution. 
मेजर्स ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मेजर्स ऑफ डिस्पर्सन मीन्स रेंज इंटरपोर्टाइल रेंज स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन द मीन डेविएशन वेरिएंस एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मीन्स कार्टोसिस स्क्यूनेस एंड कार्टोसिस कार्टोसिस एंड स्क्यूनेस स्क्यूनेस ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर अप्लाइंग एनी स्टेटिकल टूल एंड टेक्निक इन आर सॉफ्टवेयर वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड अवर डेटा so what is the nature of my data well, to understand the central tendency understand the measures of dispersion and distribution okay so here i am taking uh, the descriptive statistics so how to uh, apply descriptive statistics in our software so i am showing you the one case study of uh, the descriptive statistics the case study of yes now you can see the case study in the case, in this case study the data file containing three variables of the uh, students is gender and marks obtained in final exam of a particular a uh, particular class so here uh, the uh, the data set you can see here the age gender and final exam and the data set of the 30 student it's a data set you can see here the uh, data set now it so in this data set you can see the student number 1 the age 14 years gender male final exam he obtained 81 marks so it's a data set of 30 students so in a descriptive statistics we learn how to calculate the central tendency like mean 5% trimmed mean median 95% confidence interval of uh, mean lower bound upper bound and second is measures of dispersion uh, is it visible to you can you see this slide uh, the yes, major yeah, okay okay measures of dispersion and distance thank you thank you so first of all we will write the script of the uh, data set this particular data set you can see the script so what will we do in uh, the r software so first of all we will open our app r software r studio now you can see the r so in the first step we import our data file import our data file so the import of uh, data file so the import data set data set from text you can see here data from text reader so now browse i have kept in the folder the folder name the galgotias the galgotias the session 1 and the descriptive statistics it's a dot csv the file it's a dot csv format now you can see the file this file uh, it has three variables one is age gender uh, and final exam now data set you can see it's a data set so first of all uh, uh, the before applying any technique we need to import the particular file so here now you can see the view view and in a bracket it's a uh, file name class data for descriptive it's a very big file name so i am converting this file into short name okay so i am writing here my data you just see here uh, my data so my data and then 
uh, x1 the underscore class this now you can see so it's a very big file name so i am converting into short now my file name is my data now what will uh, i need to understand the data set so here i am writing the head when i write the script head and in a bracket my data so it will show the uh, cases of uh, my data set six cases so total uh, sample size of data 30 but it will show only upper six cases and if i write here tail and within bracket uh, my data my data and then the tail it will show the last six entries okay so we can check our data now the central tendency we need central tendency because it is a script based uh, test so we will write the script of uh, script of each uh, uh, each technique like we want to know the mean so we will write here mean of the data mean and within bracket my data type my data and dollar dollar sign and the age my data now you can see my data and age age it's a variable so my data my data dollar sign and oh, sorry dollar sign and age okay so i can take the mean value of uh, my data age the age is for how do we calculate mean value mean value basically Uh, I mean value ko now you can see the mean value so mean basically summation of numbers like 14 plus 16 plus 17 we add all the number and divide by the number of observations okay uh abdi ki isme jo hai ye mean ho gaya so we can estimate mean value of each continuous variable so there are two continuous variable in this data set one is age it is continuous and another final exam so the mean value of the students 17.13 uh, three okay now i want to know the mean value mean value of final exam so i will write here my data my data uh, dollar sign and final exam so it's a script of mean so the final exam mean marks in final exam 77.5 if i want to uh, calculate the trimmed mean five percent trimmed mean trimmed mean so how will i calculate the trimmed mean so uh, write mean mean and the within bracket my data my data it's file name because earlier it was very long so i converted into the short form and the age then comma trim t r i m trim and equal to 0 0.05 0 0.05 and then after trim the press so the trimmed mean is 17.107 it's near to the overall mean now the trimmed mean of another variable so we write the script mean within a bracket my data 
dollar sign and another uh, example that is final exam and then trim uh, equal to uh, 0.05 so we can get the trimmed mean of the final exam variable now the median how to calculate the median here median uh, median 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 and within bracket my data and uh, my data dollar sign median of age so i am finding the median age of the students 30 students the me median age is 17 and median number of uh, final exam median my another variable final exam my data dollar sign and then final exam so the median 76.5 if i want to know the 95 percent confidence interval okay so for this we required the package i need 95 percent of the package 95 percent confidence interval we need package so we will check in our library uh, library library and within this lattice lattice yes i already installed this uh, package so without this package i cannot find the 95 percent class interval and the second package that is i need to to it a library and within library p l y r p l y r again it is uh, the second package the third package i need uh, a library in my library library the third package the package name r m i uh, R M I S C R M I C ये शायद मेरे इसमें पैकेज नहीं है तो इसलिए इसके लिए कैसे करते हैं हम सो वी विल इंस्टॉल दिस पैकेज यू गो टू पैकेज एंड देन दी पैकेज एंड वी इंस्टॉल दी पैकेज सो व्हाट इज दी पैकेज नेम आर एम I uh, S C this package. Okay, so I retain the package name R M I C and then install. So if you do not have any particular package, so it will show error in library. Okay, so now I installed the package. The package name uh, library and R M I S. Ab dekhi, ye now my package installed. So the confidence interval C I C I C I within bracket my data and the age dollar sign a and confidence interval c i equal to 0.95 agar kuch galat hoga isme to it will show error theek hai ye dekhiye maine dono same likha hai c i shayad error ho sakta hai because c i capital hoga yahan pe ye dhyan rakhiyega to ye dekhiye yahan pe likhna hai padega hame c i so i am writing here c i and within bracket my data uh, dollar sign age the other ci equal to 0.95 dekhiye ab aa jana chahiye aa gaya the c upper limit lower limit and uh, the mean value 
कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल टेल अस अबाउट द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द डेटा सो इन ए नॉर्मल प्रोबेबिलिटी प्लॉट जस्ट लाइक दिस सो कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल मींस 2.5% लेफ्ट टेल एंड 2.5% राइट टेल सो इट मींस द 95 सैंपल मीन वुड विल कम अंडर दिस द रीजन ओके सो इट्स ए अपर uh tail 17.89 and lower tail 16.369 and mean value uh, 17.113 so now we can uh the calculate the confidence interval now the second is measures of dispersion measures of dispersion means uh, uh, variance standard deviation minimum and maximum value range interquartile range so how will calculate all these value variance so for variance i am writing here var variance and within bracket my file name my data and dollar sign the age so i will get the variance of age what is the variance variance is 4.188 variance tell us about the uh the distribution of data how the particular individual variable vary above or below the mean okay now the variance of uh, the other variable my data uh, dollar sign and final exam so variance the it is 51.755 so the second is minimum how to find the minimum and the second is standard deviation standard deviation basically square root of the uh, variance sd also tell us about the uh, the vari variability of the data the my data my data dollar sign the standard deviation of age so what is the standard deviation 2.04 now the standard deviation of another uh, variable the my data my data uh, dollar sign and uh, the final exam other variable 7.1195 now the minimum value how to calculate the minimum value we will write here minimum min and within bracket my data my data day my data and dollar sign age age means minimum age of the 30 students so what would be the minimum age the 14 is the minimum age now you can see here the 14 it's the minimum age and then 16 17 19 18 so minimum is uh, for uh, uh, the 14 and minimum marks uh, now the second is minimum marks obtained by students in a class so my other variable my data dollar sign final exam so the minimum marks obtained by the students in a class uh, 66 now the maximum i want to know the maximum age of the student in a class so i am writing here uh, my data and the dollar sign age and the maximum age of the student in a class 21 and maximum marks obtained by students in a class if i want to know so i am writing the my data uh, dollar sign and the final exam so this is the 89 marks obtained highest marks uh, 89 in a class so we can find the measures of dispersion also and another thing range and inter in, and interquartile range range also tell us about the uh, the the dispersion of the data so range how to calculate the range so we will write here range range and my data my data then dollar sign h and then the 14 and 21 so what does it mean the 14 and 
basically they, there are 30 observations in this case study 30 students the 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 maximum age of the student uh, the 21 and minimum is uh, 14 so it's a range basically same as we can find the range of the my other variable final exam marks obtained in final exam so we just simply write the range and you can write here the script for range range and within bracket my data and dollar sign final exam now you just press it so minimum uh, marks obtained by the students in a class 66 and maximum 89 now the other dispersion that is interquartile range quartile range tell us about the uh, the 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 data in the uh, the interquartile means q1 q2 and q3 it divide data into four part four parts okay ab dekhiye quartile uh, we want to find the quartile interquartile range how will we find quantile quantile and or other dusra bhi ek wo hai iqr iqr within bracket my data sorry my uh, data my data dollar sign and age interquartile range of the data so what is interquartile range 2.75 okay now i want to know the summary of my data s u m m a r write the summary and my data then you will get the summary of this data now you can see this summary the age there are three variable age it is continuous variable gender it is a uh, nominal scale non metric uh, categorical data and this third continuous data so here we can get the summary minimum the value of uh, first quartile uh, value of first quartile uh, then median third quartile maximum same as the other variable minimum first quartile median mean and third quartile so quartile uh, basically divide data into the uh, four parts but uh, four parts means first quarter it's a qu uh, the quartile so the it's a q1 and this one median median dispersedness of the data and third is quartile means 25 percent data uh, lie in this range and 50 percent data lie in this range and uh, the 25 percent data above this range so quartile uh, the first quartile means lower the, the for example uh, my observations from uh, 60 to 90 okay so uh, the how many students obtained the marks uh, we will divide this 60 to 90 into the first quartile means 25 percent students obtain the marks 60 to 70 and 50 percent students obtain marks 70 to 80 and 25 percent students obtain marks above 20 uh, 80 okay so it's a quartile and the after this uh, we need to find the distribution the third uh, the third is distribution through distribution the distribution distribution we should know the distribution distribution means skewness skewness and kurtosis of the uh, data it is very important to find the normality and uh, normality of the uh, data so for parametric test we check the normality of the data and there are three methods to find the normality of the data one is through graph we can understand the normality second value of skewness and kurtosis 
and third is KS test, Kolmogorov Simranov test. So uh, through this, all these three methods tell us about the normality of the data. So skewness, what is skewness? Basically, sometimes we ask the question in a Likert scale. I like this product. It's, my, it's a simple statement. I like this product. And my answer in a five-point Likert scale, one, strongly disagree. Second option, disagree. Third, neutral and fourth agree and fifth option strongly agree so sometimes what happen when uh, the respondent give opinion about the this particular statement what do they uh, sometimes maximum people give the uh, uh, tick either one or two option in case of 100 sample size so the in a y-axis, it's a frequency, the 5, 10, for example, it's a 30. So 35 people opted option 1, 30 people opted option 2, okay, option 2. So what would be the graph? Graph would be and rest of the other 15 like this, okay? The other 15, they will take either 3, 4 or 5. So the graph, it will skewed and it's a problem. So skew, it's a positive skew. Sometimes what happens, people uh, tick either four or five, maximum people the op uh, tick option four or five. So maximum people, uh, when they tick four or five, so the shape of the graph would be look like this. Again, it's a problem. This problem known as negative skewness, negative skewness so the desirable graph what should be the graph graph should be in a bell shape bell means ghanti uh, the uh, the graph should be normally distributed so to check whether the skewness present or not so we will calculate the value of skewness and kurtosis and its value uh, should be minus one to plus one. If it is between minus one to plus one, there is no problem. Ideally, the value of skewness and kurtosis should be uh, uh, zero. But if value between minus one and plus one, it means our data normally distributed. So how to find the skewness of the data in R? So skewness, we will check the particular software a particular package whether the package available or not so what will we will check for skewness we require the package p s y c h so we will check in my library whether this particular uh, the package available in library or not library it's it just like a book so before uh, analyze anything you should need to install the particular package yeah, the package should in your library so package name is p s y uh, c p i y c h i think it is not available in my library so error in library so what should i do i go to install okay install and i will search the package p s y c h yes this is p s y psych and then install and after install, I can uh, find skewness and kurtosis. Without this package, I cannot estimate skewness and kurtosis of my data. So here, uh, the uh, now I can check whether it is in my library or not. Library and P S Y C H. Yes. Now you can see the and other uh, package. We need library. Check the E10, E107. Yes, it is already installed in my uh, the, the R studio. Okay. Ye hamer pass already hai. Now we can see the, uh, the library. Now I can find the skewness and kurtosis of data write is script is q 
so either you can uh, you can opt anyone so skew and my data dollar sign and then age so what is the skewness 0.3629 and the other variable skewness skew the skew my data uh, dollar sign and final exam so what is the uh, skewness minus 0 0.0201 okay so it's a skewness of other variable now second is kurtosis what do you mean by kurtosis kurtosis basically tell us about the uh, flatness of the data so there are three types of uh, kurtosis one is when sample size is less then we may obtain the uh, graph look like this okay so it's a uh, platycurtic platycurtic second when we increase the sample size uh, sample size the graph would be look like this it's a mesocartic meso mesocartic and the third is when we increase sample size the graph would look like this it's a uh, leptocartic leptocartic graph so its value should between minus 1 to plus 1 if it is uh, between minus 1 2 plus 1, then there is no issue of normality of the data. So, how to find it? In a, so, we will write the script for the, uh, the script of kurtosis. We write C kurtosis and within bracket my data, my data dollar sign and then age. So the kurtosis minus 0.8125. There is no issue of uh, normality. And for another variable, kurtosis, kurtosis, my another variable that is final exam. So my data and dollar sign and final final exam. Now you can see uh, it's a problem in second uh, data because kurtosis value minus it is outside the range so minus 1.443 okay now second uh, the group statistics if we want to find the group statistics of the data so how do we do it so first of all uh, you describe we should write the describe 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 okay and then my data dollar sign and age now we can get the descriptive statistics descriptive descriptive statistics now you can see the uh, the descriptive statistics so the variance variance then numbers mean standard deviation mean trimmed mean minimum maximum range skewness kurtosis variables we can find just to write the describe we just write the describe and the another variable the second variable uh, describe another describe my second variable my data dollar sign and final exam now you can see the descriptive statistics of the final exam variable okay so we can get this also now uh, the the second thing the normality and homogeneity of the data so as we know in a parametric test basically we need uh, the assumption of the parametric test i will discuss parametric test in second session so parametric test basically parametric test uh, basically assumptions based test so before applying the parametric test we check the normality of the data 
and homogeneity of the data homogeneity of the uh, data there are two assumptions of the uh, parametric test so the how to find normality i told you there are three methods one is through graphs we can understand the concept of normality graph means uh, uh, histogram histogram or pp or qq plot pp or qq plot pp means probability probability and qq means quintile quintile plot and third is the ks shapiro test there are many tests to check the normality and homogeneity we check homogeneity through the uh, the levin levin test levin test through levin test we can check the norm, uh, homogeneity of the data so uh, for parametric test there, there are two main assumptions so before applying any parametric test we should estimate or check whether my data normally distributed or not whether my data homogeneous or not if my data not uh, normal not homogeneous then we apply non parametric non parametric tests equivalent to the parametric test okay so the uh, how to check the assumptions of the parametric test so for assumptions of the parametric test for same data i am using same data set for checking the uh, the the assumptions of the data the assumptions uh, my uh, so first of all i need to check in my library whether the particular package uh, that is n o r t e s t nor test so it's a package i told you more than 10000 packages available in r so before applying any statistical tool or whether we are creating graph or managing our data we need particular package so with if we don't install the particular package we cannot uh, estimate the value of particular uh, variable okay so it, it no test it is not in my library agar library mein hota then it will show purple color it is not my library so what will i do so uh, i need package so i am pressing it package and install install what is the package name nor test this is nor test okay and then install it and it is installing yes now the package has been installed now i check in my library whether it came or not so no test yes dekhi jab aisa sign aa jaye na it means it is inside this r studio ke andar hai ye no test now there is no problem i can perform it so library uh, there are many uh, test we one is lily test for checking the normality of the data so l i l uh, l i e lily test lily test and within bracket my data dollar sign and age okay so i can check the normality of the age variable whether the age normally distributed or not so lily test so for checking the uh, the normality our uh, variable value should be greater than 0.05 the significance p value this p value it's a ks test kolmogorov simronov normality test so p value should be greater than 0.05 it means data uh, normal non significant we should keep in mind significant for checking the uh, the the significant difference we need a p value should be less than 0.05 for significant impact but for assumptions purpose for assumptions 
whether we are uh, checking normality or homogeneity homogeneity both the p value should be greater than uh, 0.05 okay dhyan rakhna hai so this p value greater than 0.05 so data normal okay now the other ye uh, kya the lily test for the other variable so i am checking the normality of my other variable l i l i am writing the script lily test uh, within bracket my data my data and dollar sign the other variable final exam whether uh, the this variable uh, normally distributed or not yes the p value here so the lily force kolmogorov simran now normality test you can see the for this variable uh, the p value 0.3296 it is greater than uh, 0.05 it means if i convert it into the percentage it is 32.96% which is much greater than the 5% theek hai na to ye is tarike se if i am using a uh, 20 question in my research paper so i will check the normality and homogeneity of uh, each questions to is tarike se har ek questions ka we will check the normality second i told you the uh, the second uh, the method that is skewness and uh, kurtosis so skewness already i told you again i am repeating how to find the skewness of the data my data uh, dollar sign and age so the data this point 32 0.362 theek hai isi tarike se a uh, kurtosis of this variable kurtosis my data dollar sign and age the kurtosis there is no problem of skewness and kurtosis this variable normally distributed both the value should be uh, between minus 1 and plus 1 theek hai na is tarike se we can find now sec the third method the, that is graph graph means histogram or qq plot so how will i uh, create the graph you just write hist hist h i s t hist and within bracket my data and dollar sign and a uh, the so for uh, this i need another file i am checking the for histogram i am selecting another file because i have created many file uh, the import data main uski alag file open kar raha hu the file browse my data in a desktop galgotias the session 1 mm, the normality and this case study class data and import no ye dusra aa gaya data with normality ka for homogeneity dusri file hai homogeneity ke liye for text the homogeneity uh, desktop galgotias the mm, i am selecting the file for a uh, homogeneity now class data for homogeneity homogeneity एक मिनट ये डेटा फाइल वो वाली फाइल है इसमें होमोजेनिटी चलिए इसी से ही हम कर सकते हैं नो प्रॉब्लम वो डेटा फाइल मुझे नहीं मिल रही जिसमें मैं चाहता था हिस्टोग्राम बनाना देखता हूं उसको हिस्टोग्राम के लिए एक फाइल है हिस्टोग्राम हिस्टोग्राम यस yes, ये जो है यहां पर एक फाइल है हिस्टोग्राम फाइल नंबर टेन 
Yes, national. Now you can see the, my file. I imported the file. So you just see the file x10 underscore national seminar data for histogram. It's a very big file. So I'm converting it into the short view. Uh, sorry. Uh, my data. I'm converting this file x10 underscore. Yes this up i will not write this uh, big name ye, ye, ye jo hai na, so i converted into the short so now my data this is my file in this file there are uh, four variable one is categorical variable gender day one day two and day three okay day one day two and day three Basically, in this case study, the biologist wants to know the. I uh, will case study. Ko show kar deta isme, jo hai homogeneity case study. Yes. Case study for yeah. case history, histogram. Yes. Case study main show kar raun. You just please see, go through this case study. What is the case study? In this case study, the coordinator was worried about the potential health effect of national seminar and measured the hygiene of 10, 800 participants over the three days of the program. Okay, it is very simple. 800 participants participated in a seminar and they stayed three days in a uh, the, the hotel or the accommodation provided by the university. So day one, day two, and day three. So the day one, the hygiene score between zero to four. Zero means if someone giving the score zero means hygiene condition poor. And if someone giving a score four, the hygiene condition excellent. So zero, one, Two, three, and four. Now, respondent uh, um, had choice to give uh, the between uh, zero to one, like 0.57 or 3.25. This case, bhi they can give the opinion. So, ye case study. Hai. Now, I am finding the uh, the histogram because the, there are three methods to checking the normality of the data. One, uh, the histogram, through histogram ki hum check kar sakte hai. Mein fir se, I'm repeating again, we can check the normality. The, there are three methods to find the normality of the data. Uh, normality, whether the data normally distributed or not. The first is, through graphs, through graphs, there are two types of graphs, histogram, histogram or other PP or uh, PP plot or QQ, QQ plot, quantile, quantile plot. Through this, we can check whether my data are normally distributed or not. Second is value of uh, skewness and kurtosis. Its value uh, between minus one to plus one and third is uh, value of KS test through Lily test we check the whether my data normally distributed or not. So P value should be greater than 0 0.05. If it is greater than 0 0.05 then there is no issue of. So we have checked uh, the normality of the data through skewness and kurtosis and KS test. Now the third is graph. So how to check the normality of the data through graph. So for creating the graph. So my, uh, the, my file name is my data. So I am just creating the graph hist. I'm writing hist and the uh, my data. And I want to create graph of there are four uh, variable. Three variables are continuous day one, day two, and day three. So I can create histogram only th continuous variable, not a categorical variable. So the day one. And what is the graph? Now you can see the it's a graph. 
So graph through this graph, we can check whether my data normally distributed or not. So I told you the uh, shape of the graph. It should be normally distributed in a bell shape. If my data in a bell shape, then there is no issue of normality. So through this graph, uh, the data normally distributed. Normally, there is no issue of normality. So data is normally distributed. The second day graph, if I need the second day graph, how will I create the graph? Hist and within bracket, within bracket, dusre uh, variable kabi I can uh, they check my data and dollar sign day two and then this. So this graph, now you can see it is not uh, normally distributed because it is the bell uh, shape not present. It's a skewed, it's a positive skewed. The graph of this data, it's, uh, it's a problem. It's a positive skewness. So positive uh, skewness, it's a positive skewness. So this data not normally distributed. So then QQ plot, another is through QQ plot, we can check whether data normally distributed or not. So you just write the script QQ plot, uh, QQ plot, sorry, QQ norm, QQ norm, normality, say norm, QQ norm, my data, my data dollar sign, and day one. Now you can see, yes. So through this graph, the interpretation of uh, uh, this graph. So if all the observations lie on this principal diagonal, basically it's a, uh, there is a uh, diagonal. So all the observations should uh, be this, lie on this diagonal, okay? This diagonal per sare uh, observation, there, there is no issue, it's a, normal data okay now the we need a graph we should present our data through graph also so how to create the uh, graph so i am creating the graph the first graph uh, i am creating bar chart bar chart for because uh, file we many lee hai now the bar chart I am opening the file, same bar chart, bar chart, same data. I already use this file, the bar chart. Now you can see the age, gender and final exam. So I'm creating the bar chart, how to create by, uh, bar chart in a R. So first of all, uh, because my file name is very big, so I'm converting my file, my data into short, chote formula, my data uh, x5, sorry, x5 underscore the class data for bar chart. Okay, now my file name is my data. So, First of all, we need table. So I'm writing the table here, the table and then my data and the gender. Okay, so I will get the table. So in this data set, uh, 16 uh, female students and 14 uh, male students. So the next step, my data, my uh, data and table, so table, uh, my data, table, sorry, my data, I'm converting my, my data, I'm convert around table and within bracket, here I have a table. Ko, select here then my data 
डॉलर साइन यहां पे क्या लिखा था जेंडर डॉलर साइन जेंडर एंड देन एंटर आफ्टर एंटर राइट द स्क्रिप्ट फॉर बार प्लॉट बार चार्ट बार प्लॉट एंड विद इन ब्रैकेट माई डेटा अच्छा इसको चलिए मैंने माई डेटा कर दिया कोई दिक्कत नहीं आई शुड गिव दी अनदर नेम माई डेटा वन लेकिन चलिए इससे भी हो जाएगा ना माई डेटा है ना यू कैन सी दी ग्राफ दिस इज बाय बार चार्ट टू पार्टिसिपेंट्स वन फीमेल एंड अनदर कैटेगरी मेल फीमेल एंड मेल तो ये बार चार्ट uh, हम लोग जो है इस तरह से हम क्रिएट uh, कर सकते हैं नाउ दी बार चार्ट इसमें अगर हमें इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गिव दी कलर स्कीम ऑल्सो इन दिस बार चार्ट तो कलर स्कीम भी हम इसको दे सकते हैं uh, इसमें कलर स्कीम भी सो so, कैसे कलर स्कीम देंगे सो यू जस्ट राइट दी बार बार प्लॉट बार प्लॉट एंड विद इन ब्रैकेट माई डेटा माई डेटा और फिर नाउ कॉमा डिसाइड डिसाइड इक्वल टू ट्रू एंड देन मेन मेन अगर आपको इसमें हेडिंग देना चाहते हैं आई एम गिविंग टाइटल सो वॉट इज दाइटल इट्स ए अबाउट फीमेल एंड मेल सो आई एम राइटिंग हियर फीमेल एंड मेल इट्स ए टाइटल ऑफ माई ग्राफ मेल स्टूडेंट स्टूडेंट इन ए क्लास इन ए क्लास इन ए क्लास ठीक है ये टाइटल नेम एंड देन एक्स लैब एक्स एक्सिस एक्स लैब एक्स एल ए बी एक्स लैब इक्वल टू एक्स लैब इक्वल टू एक्स एक्सिस पर क्या है जेंडर सो आई एम गिविंग द नेम ऑफ एक्स एक्सिस जेंडर एंड द वाई एक्सिस द वाई लैब वाई एल ए बी आई एम गिविंग नेम ऑफ वाई एक्सिस सो वाई एक्सिस वाई लैब इक्वल टू द नेम ऑफ दिस नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स ओके नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स एंड आई एम गिविंग दी कलर नेम सी ओ एल और इक्वल टू मैंने यहां पर लिखे थ्री फाइव सो यू कैन राइट वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव कुछ भी कलर दे सकते हैं नाउ यू जस्ट सी एंड विद इन ब्रैकेट थ्री कॉमा फोर ये जब मैंने ऐसे किया देन आई विल गेट दी कलर्ड द कलर्ड ग्राफ कलर्ड ओके सो इस तरीके से वी कैन गिव दी द ग्राफ नेम हम दे दिया हमने यहाँ पे फीमेल एंड मेल स्टूडेंट्स इन ए क्लास इन दी वाई लैब मीन्स इन वाई एक्सिस नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स एंड इन एक्स एक्सिस जेंडर फीमेल एंड मेल so uh, we can give the name also in x and uh, y axis or title name bhi hum usko de sakte hain if i want to change the uh, the color scheme so i just simply write here 7 8 7,8 kuch bhi de sakte hain 1 2 uh, 3 4 7 8 7 just 7 8 the color scheme will be this aur agar main isme likhu 1 and 2 so i can create graph my own choice uh, mai isko jo hai fir dekhi you can the graph is tarah ke se so graph you can create is tarah ke se create kar sakte second is pie chart pie chart also important to present our data in a pie chart so how to create the pie, pie chart so my data and divided by 30 observations so divided by 30 and the 30 to so 53. or 0.533% female and 0.466% male 
ठीक है अब नाउ आई एम शोइंग यू थ्रू दी बार प्लॉट सो बार प्लॉट एंड देन माय डेटा माय डेटा माय डेटा एंड डिवाइडेड बाय थर्टी सो आई कैन गेट द ग्राफ ये देखिए इस तरीके से हमने एक ग्राफ पाई चार्ट बना लिया I need uh, some color. तो कलर अगर मुझे इसमें देना है तो कलर के लिए मैं बिल्कुल वैसे ही करूंगा कलर एंड सॉरी ये बार प्लॉट आ गया ये पाई चार्ट नहीं है बार ठीक है तो इसी तरीके से सॉरी पाई के लिए देखिए हमको अलग से ये मैंने रिपीट कर दिया परसेंटेज में अगर देना हो वी कैन गिव इन दर्सेंटेज Now in the y-axis you can see the fifty-three. The case me percentage me. Now this uh, uh, when I divided uh, observation into the. ये मैंने thirty को divide जब कर दिया तो ये आ गया हमारा लगभग point five three three और ये है point four six six something. इस तरीके से we can show our data also. ठीक है एक तो ये आ गया. Now the next is pie. वो जो मैं कर रहा था pie chart, pie chart for pie uh, for getting the pie chart. How to how to find the pie chart? So for same data um, uh, table. ये एक मिनट इसमें देखते हैं हम gender frequency पहले gender एक script for this gender uh, frequency. जेंडर फ्रीक्वेंसी जेंडर फ्रीक्वेंसी देन टेबल इसमें हमने क्या किया है टेबल माई डेटा माई डेटा और माई डेटा के बाद जो है हमारे पास इनकी फ्रीक्वेंसी देखिए आती है या नहीं फिर हम ये भी जेंडर फ्रीक्वेंसी नाउ जेंडर फ्रीक्वेंसी पाई ये जेंडर फ्रीक्वेंसी पाई जेंडर जेंडर फ्रीक्वेंसी इसमें कुछ डाउट आ गया ठीक है तो ये देखिए नाउ यू कैन क्रिएट दी पाई चार्ट ऑल्सो तो पाई चार्ट भी हम इसमें बना सकते हैं एंड जैसे मैंने बताया कि इसमें कलर स्कीम सो कलर स्कीम या कोई भी टाइटल वी कैन गिव दी टाइटल नेम आल्सो सो लाइक पाई ठीक है और पाई देन विद इन ब्रैकेट जेंडर जेंडर फ्रीक्वेंसी कॉमा मेन आई वांट टू गिव दी टाइटल of this graph graph main and the title name is female and male students in a class students in a uh, class ye title name it's a title name and then uh, the color scheme also i need color scheme to so c o l and equal to c and within bracket you can write 5 and 6 5 and 6 alag alag color aap de sakte hain ye dekhiye now you can see the uh the pie chart pie chart bhi hum is tarike se bana sakte hain theek hai to ye pie chart bhi uh, is tarike se we can show the uh, pie chart now uh, we need ये तो हो गया हमारा आप, आ, जो पाई चार्ट के बारे में इट इज अबाउट दी पाई चार्ट तो आ, अब इसके बाद देखिए इसी तरीके से हम जो है दूसरे ग्राफ भी बना सकते हैं और अब मैं चूंकि टाइम थोड़ा सा हमारे पास कम है अभी एक दो ग्राफ और बना के फिर वी विल कम टू दी पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट ठीक है वो पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट भी हम करेंगे लेकिन पहले भी एक दो ग्राफ मैं और बना देता हूं लाइक like तो हम बना लेंगे अब देखिए एक क्लस्टर्ड जो बार है हमारा क्लस्टर्ड बार 
वो कैसे बनाना हाउ टू क्रिएट द क्लस्टर बार द्लस्टर बार आई एम इम्पोर्टिंग दी फाइल फॉर क्लस्टर बार दाइल नेम इज बार प्लॉट ये बार प्लॉट गलगोटियास बार प्लॉट क्लस्टर्ड स्केटर्ड ये भी हो गया बार प्लॉट माय डेटा लॉ एंड डेटा बार प्लॉट इंस्टोग्राम ग्रुप एक मिनट स्टैक्ड बार शायद ये होगा हाँ ये बार प्लॉट ठीक है ना इसके अगर हमें जो है बनाना है स्केटर्ड डेटा का मतलब जो डेटा हमारा स्टैग्ड बार स्टैग्ड बार सो हाउ टू क्रिएट दी स्टैग बार ये देखिए ये फाइल आ गया फाइल ठीक है इस फाइल में ये फाइल ने में इस केस स्टडी में लॉयन देर आर टू वेरिएबल्स द लॉयन इंसेंटिव एंड डांस इन दिस केस स्टडी सो द रिसर्चर गिविंग फूड एज इंसेंटिव टू दी लॉ एंड एंड देर आर टू आउटकम वेदर दे डांस और नॉट डांस एंड अनदर इंसेंटिव अफेक्शन एंड अगेन देर आर टू आउटकम दे डांस और डो नॉट डांस तो इस तरीके के डेटा को अगर स्टैक्ट बार में शो करना हो देन हाउ विल वी शो दिस डेटा so first of all i am writing my data my data i am converting my file x7 otherwise to fir badi bar bar likhna padega hame isliye maine isko short form kar liya my data okay now my file name is my data now i am creating the table the table and the bracket my data my data dollar sign incentive and another variable my data my data dollar sign dance and then enter so the uh, out of the two uh, <coughs> out of the two uh, was sorry 150 cats uh, 150 lions so isme total kitna hai data set of data set of 150 ab dekhiye jo data hai ye kitne ka 1 1 uh, uh, 50 so out of the 150 uh, 120 ke, uh, lines ko affection kiya out of the 120 75 did not dance and 45 dance and out of the 30 only uh, when we gave food to the lions 10 did not dance and 20 dance ab is tarike ke data ko agar hame show karna ho through the uh, graph so kaise isko show, show karenge so ye jo data set hai ab aap isko dekh lijiye so i am creating uh, table 1 table 1 theek hai and then my, uh, table table within bracket table within bracket my data dollar sign uh, my data dollar sign incentive and then comma my data uh, my data dollar sign dance ठीक and then uh, bar plot script for bar chart write the bar plot and table table 1 table 1 now you can see the bar plot it's a stacked ye dekhiye is tarike se stacked bar theek hai to hum stacked bar we can create कलर वगैरह अगर देना है इसमें कुछ आपको ना वी कैन गिव दी कलर नेम आल्सो या इसको और डेटा को हमें थोड़ा सा शो करना है इसका जो जो प्रेजेंटेशन है वो कैसे करेंगे लिखिए यहाँ पे यू जस्ट राइट 
type the bar plot bar plot and within bracket table one table one comma beside beside equal to true t comma now give the name title of this data set the type of incentive so the within bracket types of incentives uh, incentives and type of incentive ke baad type of incentive comma x uh, ab, sorry isko bahar comma x lab x axis x lab x label kya hoga x ka the label i am giving the name uh, x incentive incentive theek hai and the y label y lab y lab uh, label for the y axis the number of lion number of lions और मैं इसको कैपिटल में बना लेता हूं एल कैपिटल इसमें कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता स्मॉल बी यू कैन टेक देन लीजेंड एल ई जी ई एन डी लीजेंड एंड देन इक्वल टू इक्वल टू रो आर ओ डब्ल्यू रो नेम्स रो नेम्स एंड देन विद इन ब्रैकेट टेबल वन टेबल वन टेबल वन एंड कलर स्कीम अब देखिए कलर स्कीम वी नीड कलर स्कीम सो सी ओ एल ठीक है एंड इक्वल टू सी विद इन ब्रैकेट कोई भी कलर दे सकते हैं वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव कुछ भी लिख ले सो आई एम राइटिंग थ्री फोर पांच छह लिखूंगा देन कलर विल बी डिफरेंट नाउ यू कैन सी दी दिस सो इस तरीके से वी कैन क्रिएट अवर ग्राफ ऑल्सो the in this graph the y axis number of lions so when uh, we affection affection when we give affection to the lions so uh, means about uh, yeah more than 70 means 75 uh, did not uh, did not dance and only how many dance जो बाकी जो बची है अफेक्शन दो फोर्टी फाइव फोर्टी फाइव डांस एंड फॉर फूड दी डांस एंड टेन डिड नॉट डिड नॉट डांस सो मीन्स फूड एज ए रिवार्ड एनिमल्स के लिए काम करता है बिकॉज मैक्सिम परसेंटेज फूड की है जो फूड दे रहे हैं दे जो लॉयस है वो डांस करते हैं तो वी कैन प्रेजेंट अवर डेटा इन ए ग्राफ ऑल्सो टू ग्राफ अच्छा एक अब अब मैं आ जाता हूं सीधा ये तो हो गया ग्राफ्स के बारे में नाउ आई कम टू दी पॉइंट वो जो है मैं अब इसमें यह कि अब पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट में ठीक है ना पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट में हम डायरेक्टली आ जाते हैं पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट में ले रहा हूं सो पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट के लिए देखिए हमें क्या करना है वन इसमें वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट इंडिपेंडेंट टी टेस्ट देर आर फाइव पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट जो मैं यूज करने वाला हूं अभी सो आई एम टेकिंग फाइव पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट वन दैट इज दन वन सैंपल one sample uh, t test second is uh, uh, independent independent uh, t test theek hai inka matlab pehle hum samajh le and third paired so iske applications kya hai wo pehle main samjhaunga then i will apply each test paired t test then anova and fifth is 
रिपीटेड मेजर्स एनोवा ठीक है इनका सबका क्या मतलब है एक एक केस स्टडी लेके हम इसको एक्सप्लेन करते हैं सो आई एम टेकिंग द फर्स्ट केस स्टडी ऑफ वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट क्या है वो भी हम देख लेते हैं तो वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट में अब देखिए वन सैंपल अब देखिए जिसकी जरूरत नहीं है मैं इनको फाइल को हटा देता हूं नॉर्मेलिटी स्टैग्ड बार बस एक मिनट में पहले इनको हटा देता हूं आई एम क्लियरिंग माय एक्स्ट्रा फाइल्स ठीक है अब इसमें डेस्क्रिप्टिव भी हो गया हिस्टोग्राम स्केटर डायग्राम रह गया अभी टाइम मिलेगा तो कर देंगे बॉक्स प्लॉट और स्केटर डायग्राम नाउ वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट नाउ द केस स्टडी ऑफ वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट इन वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट बेसिकली इन ए वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट वी वांट टू चेक द हाइपोथेसिस so the hypothesis it's a population and from this population we took the one sample it's a population mean and its sample mean okay so there are two hypothesis uh, one null hypothesis and another alternate hypothesis in null hypothesis we always assume that there is no significant be, uh, difference between the two means population mean equal to the sample mean but in uh, the uh, the alternate hypothesis says the population mean does not equal to the sample uh, mean okay to so, ab pehle to case study fir isko uh, isko samjhate hain aage ye dekhiye is tarike se box plot humne nahi banaya tha janbujh ke main yahan banaunga box plot i will create here box plot dekhiye in this case study <coughs> ये हमारी केस स्टडी है नाउ द केस स्टडी एबीसी कंपनी लॉन्च ए न्यू ब्रांड ऑफ एयर कंडीशनर फॉर इट्स कस्टमर्स एंड क्लेम्स दैट अंडर नॉर्मल सरकमस्टेंसिस द एवरेज लाइफ ऑफ एयर कंडीशन कंडीशनर इज फाइव थाउजेंड डेज मींस कि फाइव थाउजेंड डे डेज द एयर कंडीशन विल रन at least uh, 5000 days a retailer wants to test this claim company ne kaha hai company said the tire will run oh, sorry air conditioner will run uh, the 5000 days and retailer wants to confirm whether his claim right or not so retailer ne kya kiya he selected 10 sample out of the jitna bhi uske paas hoga 100 ya 200 air conditions he checked the first air condition life 46 100 days 47 uh, 150 okay ye iske observations hai now here uh, what is the population mean population mean so in the, the null hypothesis in this case the uh, population mean equal to the sample mean so what is the population mean population mean 5000 days and sample mean we will take uh, all observations sum all the observations and divided by number of observation 10 then we will get this uh, and the alternate hypothesis it is not equal ab dekhiye we should keep in mind when we compare the population mean with sample mean always we will get the different value but whether this difference significant or not after calculating the t test if p value less than 0.05 means this difference is significant same as you can take uh, the other example the, there are two sample x1 bar and x2 bar and both the sample taken from this population and i want to compare the salary this is my next case study whether the salary of male and female teachers in a private sector same or not so our uh, null hypothesis the 
salary of male teachers equal to the salary of female teachers and alternate hypothesis salary of female uh, male teachers does not equal to salary of male uh, male teachers ki salary uh, females equal nahi hai okay we should keep in mind when we uh, the compare the two groups uh, like the salary is the one group 70000 and 65 65000 There is a difference. Another seventy thousand and sixty thousand. Again, it is different. The salary of the third group seventy uh, thousand and fifty thousand. So, which one is significant? All are different. Which one is significant? Significant is this. The difference is twenty thousand. Significant means jada more. So, it is a more difference so but who will decide the p value when we analyze any statistical tool and technique the p value tell us a p value less than 0.05 it means reject we accept this theek hai na is tarike se ab ye case study hai is tarike se because we need to perform one sample t test independent t test pair test anova repeated measures anova parametric test so how do we perform in r so this is my case study i think you understood this case study so first of all we should the uh, yeah i have shared these uh, uh, files to you you can practice a script for ye humne yahan pe pehle se hi likhi hui hai so this uh, now you can see the box plot box plot tell us about the dispersedness of the data ये जो डेटा की डिस्पर्सनेस है बेसिकली ये जो बॉक्स प्लॉट बॉक्स प्लॉट ये देखिए ये बॉक्स प्लॉट बॉक्स प्लॉट दिस द लोअर क्वार्टाइल मींस 25 परसेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन लाई बिटवीन दिस रेंज ओके एंड 50 परसेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन लाई Uh, between this range and 25 percent, the upper quartile. This is Q3, 25 percent. So basically, box plot tell us about the dispersedness of the data. Dispersedness. So the minimum. Now you can see the minimum uh, in this median, the 50 percent, uh, more than 47 and uh, less than 53 something, है ना? ये इसके बीच में 50 परसेंट ऑब्जर्वेशन ओनली ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट जो डेटा है इट इज लेस देन एंड अबाउ फोर्टी टू ठीक है तो ये डेटा का सो वी शुड क्रिएट ग्राफ ग्राफ जरूर हमें कोई भी स्टेटिकल टूल्स एंड टेक्निक वी आर अप्लाइंग बट वी शुड क्रिएट ग्राफ ग्राफ से रिप्रेजेंटेशन जो उसका प्रेजेंटेशन है डेटा का वो इजी हो जाता है अब मैं आ रहा हूं देखिए डेटा सेट फॉर वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट हाउ टू परफॉर्म इन दर आर में कैसे परफॉर्म करेंगे सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम इंपोर्टिंग दी फाइल इंपोर्ट डेटा सेट दिस इज इंपोर्ट डेटा सेट ये भी ध्यान रखना है कि ऑल दी फाइल इन है हमारी जो फाइल है वो किसमें डॉट सी एस वी फॉर्मेट इट इज नॉट एस पी एस एस फॉर्मेट में नहीं है मेरी फाइल सारी सो माई ऑल फाइल इन या आप एक्सेल फाइल में होगा तो नाउ यू कैन प्रेस दिस बटन एक्सेल बट माई ऑल फाइल इन है डॉट सी एस वी फॉर्मेट आई एम चूजिंग माई फाइल मैंने डेस्कटॉप पे रखा हुआ है फोल्डर नेम गलगोटियास सो आई एम चूजिंग गलगोटियास and the session second the session second is me likha hai and one sample t test theek hai ye meri file aa gaya and then import yahan pe dekhiye likha hua import yahan pe right uh, lower you just press it import now your file will display here dekhiye ye data set hai data set of 10 observations so uh, this is my one sample uh, the data set of uh, one sample t test 
सो फाइल नेम बड़ा मैंने इसलिए लिया है जिसको आप लोगों को जब मैं शेयर करूंगा देन यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड कि दिस फाइल फॉर वन सैंपल टी टेस्ट अनदर फाइल इंडिपेंडेंट टी टेस्ट सो फाइल नेम इज बिग सो आई एम कन्वर्टिंग इन ए शॉर्ट फॉर्म सो दस ट्वेंटी वन एंड देन दिस ठीक है अब मेरी फाइल का इतना लंबा नाम नहीं होगा सिंपली आई कन्वर्टेड इन टू दिस शॉर्ट नाउ माई फाइल नेम इज माई डेटा जो फाइल है ठीक है नाउ बिकॉज इट इज दैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट सो वी शुड चेक द नॉर्मलिटी ऑफ दिस डेटा सो बट बिफोर इट आई एम क्रिएटिंग द ग्राफ बॉक्स प्लॉट सो राइट बॉक्स सॉरी बॉक्स प्लॉट बॉक्स प्लॉट बिकॉज बॉक्स प्लॉट टेल एस अबाउट द डिस्पर्सनेस ऑफ डेटा माई डेटा डॉलर साइन and then uh, days theek hai uh, now you can give the color c o l equal to if you want to give the green you just simply write the green agar blue blue uh, ya yeah, aap jo hai purple jo bhi color likhna chahe you can show the you just write the color name now you can see the, this so this box plot tell us about the dispersedness of the data so our uh, the it's a the, the the upper the this you can see it's a uh, more than 5200 means maximum value of this and minimum uh, air condition life uh, almost to 4100 something so uh, the 25% uh, air conditions uh, life uh, between 4100 to almost 47 and the 50% uh, the 50% uh, air conditions uh, uh, life, life between the 49 and 52 so yeah, uh, it's a upper quartile upper quartile means 25% Uh, data lie between above this value and below this value. ठीक है ना ये इसके बारे में ग्राफ से हमें डिस्पर्सनेस बेसिकली बताया है अब इसका जो है बिकॉज इट इज पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट सो वी शुड चेक दॉर्मेलिटी ऑफ द डेटा सो एवरी टाइम आई विल नॉट चेक नॉर्मेलिटी थ्रू स्कीवनेस कर्टोसिस एंड ग्राफ आई जस्ट अप्लाई दस टेस्ट और सेपीरियो टेस्ट to check whether my data normally distributed or not so i am applying here shapiro test so i am uh, i am writing here shapiro test so shapiro test and within bracket my data dollar sign and days okay so ye days whether this data normally it distributed or not you can see this p value shapiro test and p value greater than 0.05 so there is no issue of normality my data normal homogeneity we cannot check for homogeneity we need at least uh, two group homogeneity uh, tell us the dispersedness of the two category the the one category uh, one and two the dispersedness of the two category whether the uh constant variance across the group or not so it is uh, the the uh, homogeneity abhi hum only uh, we are concerned here the normality of the test so my data normally distributed so there is no problem i can apply the normal uh, no i can apply one sample t test if my data not normal then equivalent to the uh, one sample t test i will use non parametric test that is one sample wilcox cohen rank sign test so tomorrow i will discuss non parametric test okay so now the uh, the ye jo hai hamara uh, the data i am applying my data normal you just write here t test theek hai t test and uh, my data and dollar sign and days and mu mu means population uh, uh, mu means population mean what is the population mean 5000 uh, so this 5000 this now this is my uh, output 
Now you can see, interpret this output. So here, null hypothesis uh, means population mean equal to sample mean. And what uh, was the, uh, the, the population mean? Population mean was uh, 5,000 days. And the sample mean, sample mean, yes, 484880. Because from this population, uh, the retailer uh, take, took only 10 uh, air conditions. So the overall, uh, the population mean 5,000 and this uh, 40, whether this difference significant or not. Be a difference significant hai ya nahi hai? Who will tell us? Who will decide? I will not decide. The, uh, the P value, P will decide. If, so we will check the it is the t value and degree of freedom this n minus 1 10 observations and p value 0.3113 means greater than 0 0.05 so we uh, accept this and alternate hypothesis ko hum accept nahi karenge so we will it means there is a difference but it is not significant. Haan, agar iski jage hota 3000, retailer uh, uh, sample 3000 days and company claiming 5000, then we can say the company uh, is lying. Haan, ki uska claim uh, not uh, right. So uska jo claim is not right, but this difference by chance, it is not significant. Okay. So the, the, now question is how to interpret it and how to write uh, the how to report the result of uh, the one sample uh, t test? So, this ke liye maine bhi aapko jo case study show kiya tha. This now how to show the <coughs> results uh, or how to write the you can here see the output. The output bhi maine aapko sorry. Eight minute. Uh, yes. I think it ठीक है अब देखिए इसका जो output है वो मैंने यहाँ पे लिख दिया और ये script भी लिख दी है so you can do practice at your uh, home also ये देखिए ये script now this interpretation now how to report result in our research paper since uh, p value greater than 0 0.05 we do not reject null hypothesis that sample mean is equal to population mean and conclude that Sample mean of air conditioner is not significant different from the population mean. It means the retailer claims right. The retailer jo kara thik hai, five thousand days jaisi chalega, thik hai na? So we will write uh, uh, the is tarikhe se ham isko write kar sakte hain, thik hai? Acha, ab dusri case study hai, the case study of uh, independent t test. Ab main usko open kar deta hu, independent t test. Independent t test. Independent, yes. Now you can see the second case study independent t test. So, what are the applications of independent t test? Independent t test, we use karna chahiye. So, the purpose of independent t test, yes. Independent t test. In this uh, example, researcher wants to know, are more men more satisfied with their job, jobs than women in private sector? A hypothetical data. Researcher collected uh, data from 15 male and 15 female employees to know the difference. Is it clear? So in this data set, the data set, the key data set, hai. yes. So 15, he uh, selected, Sample size of uh, 30 and 15 male and 15 uh, female. Ye data set. Hai. So the observation of first male 45, 46, and the observations of female employee uh, 38, 29, 34, they are less satisfied. Ye hypothetical data is not necessary. Hypothetical data. So the purpose of uh, the uh, purpose of uh, 
the, uh, the independent theta is to uh, the purpose hum kya use kar rahe hai purpose whether the difference is significant or not so independent t test basically in a independent t test uh, in dependent t test t test independent t test independent t test when we want to compare two groups okay if our study comparative study or we want to compare like there are two variable one that is the data non metric non metric means categorical data there are two categories uh, you can compare male with female private uh, private sector with public sector okay uh, rural uh, versus rural urban rural urban or a control group uh, with experimental group when we want to check whether uh, the difference between the two categories significant or not for this we use independent t test and condition of independent t test dependent variable y dependent variable it should be metric metric means data should be continuous our question should be uh, dependent variable should be continuous and uh, the independent variable should be categorical nominal scale type questions then we can perform independent t test so purpose of independent t test to check the significant difference between the two group okay so here uh, the it's a population in this case study the researcher took two sample one sample the satisfaction level of the male uh, employee and satisfaction level of uh, the uh, female and his comparing the two group male versus female theek hai ab ye dekhiye is tarike ki jo case study independent so how to uh, perform ab isko perform kaise karna hai ye dekhiye in a r पहले तो मैं सबसे पहले आई एम ओपनिंग माय डेटा फाइल सो इंपोर्ट डेटा सेट मेरी ऑल फाइल इन डॉट सी एस वी फॉर्मेट में है सो ब्राउज दोल्डर नेम गलगोटियान दैकेंड सेशन एंड इनडिपेंडेंट टी टेस्ट सो इनडिपेंडेंट टी टेस्ट जॉब सेटिस्फेक्शन now i imported this file i can see my file here the uh, you can see the file theek hai yahan dekhiye script hum chahe to yahan bhi likh sakte hain upar aisa zaruri nahi hai main to direct i am writing a script directly console mein jaake main seedha directly likh raha hu aisa koi hard and fast rule nahi hai ki yahan script likhni chahiye you can write script in your बुक कॉपी पे लिख सकते हैं पहले एंड देन यू जस्ट टाइप ठीक है ना तो स्क्रिप्ट मैंने ये जो फाइल है व्यू सो माय डेटा आई एम कन्वर्टिंग दिस फाइल बिकॉज फाइल नेम इज बिग सो एक्स ट्वेंटी टू आई एम कन्वर्टिंग इट इनटू टू शॉर्ट फॉर्म एंड नाउ माय फाइल नेम इज माय डेटा माय डेटा इफ आई एंटर इट आई कैन सी दी ऑब्जर्वेशन ओके now uh, because it is uh, uh, parametric test so i need uh, normality and homogeneity of the data so but before it i want to uh, show my data through box plot so box plot agar hum box plot bana dete hain then it is easier to uh, show the ye jo hai hamara uh, jo data ko प्रेजेंट करना इजी हो जाता है बॉक्स प्लॉट माय डेटा डॉलर साइन सेटिस्फेक्शन डिफरेंस सॉरी डिफरेंस माय डेटा डॉलर साइन एंड जेंडर अब देखिए दो दोनों का वो बन जाएगा डिस्पर्सनेस अच्छा कलर भी दे सकते हैं एक मिनट रुकी है now i am giving the color name c o l or equal to equal to uh, four 
फाइव फोर फाइव दे दिया मैंने है ना लेकिन इससे पहले मुझे वो लिखना है सी सी और विद इन ब्रैकेट फोर सॉरी फोर फाइव अभी देखिए मेरे पास ये डायग्राम आ गया है Now this box plot, or you can see the box plot, the it's a satisfaction score, satisfaction score of female and satisfaction score of male. So it, it, it is mean value. This is mean value. What is the mean value? Uh, yeah, almost forty-seven something. I'm not sure exactly. How much? We will tell you. and the mean value the uh, it is uh, 38 something so there is a difference so through graph we can understand the female uh, less satisfied than the male in a private sector theek hai graph se hame ye to pata chal gaya now uh, uh, the we check the assumptions uh, assumptions hum check karne hain So checking so there are two assumptions one assumption that is data should be normally distributed so for normality we use lily test l i l lily uh, sorry ye nahi double l nahi hoga l i double l hai na lily test lily test nor test bahut sare test hai shapiro test koi bhi use kar sakte hain lily test then uh, check my data एंड डेटा के बाद दैटिस्फेक्शन माई वेरिएबल कॉन्टिन्यूस वेरिएबल सेटिस्फेक्शन नाउ वी सी वेदर इट इज सिग्निफिकेंट और नॉट इट इज नॉट सिग्निफिकेंट इट इज डिजायरेबल माई डेटा नॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड बिकॉज पी वैल्यू हियर पी वैल्यू पी वैल्यू ग्रेटर देन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव इट इज गुड फॉर अवर इंडिपेंडेंट इंटरेस्ट तो डेटा नॉर्मल ठीक है ना For checking the uh, homogeneity, so for homogeneity we have other test. Test name is Bartlett test. Bartlett test, and here uh, my data, then dollar sign and satisfaction, then my data. my data dollar sorry uh, dollar sign uh, dollar sign gender and then right center center equal to mean mean or mere khayal mein ye ab hamara sorry ek minute aa gaya dekhiye now it's a homogeneity so whether my data homogeneous or not so this p value tell us this p value only for assumptions purpose our p value should be greater than 0.05 so it is greater than 0.05 it means my data homogeneous or for normality because p value greater than 0.05 my data uh, normal normal also my data there is no issue of normality and homogeneity then i can apply uh, the test independent t test i can compare so ab main dekhi test lag raha hu so how to check the test ya ya t dot test t dot tst t test uh, then within bracket my data dollar sign satisfaction comma my data uh, dollar sign and then uh, the gender ek minute isme ab isko thoda sa sahi se kar lete hain pehle ye t test fir se main likh raha hu t test uh, satisfaction my variable satis waise bhi kar sakte hain jaise main kar raha tha lekin main dusre satisfaction satis faction s a t i s satis faction tick and then uh difference gender gender okay and then v a r variance equal variance equal kahan gaya yahan 
वेरियंस डॉट इक्वल इक्वल नहीं आ रहा वेरियंस डॉट इक्वल इक्वल टू ट्रू 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 एंड देन डेटा क्या है यहां पे डेटा माय डेटा डेफाइल माय डेटा माय डेटा अब देखिए इसको एंटर करके आ गया ये ये आउटपुट आ गया नाउ इट्स आउटपुट ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट टी टेस्ट so uh, there are two group the, so the, the, there are two hypothesis one is null hypothesis means uh, the two means are equal jo is population se liya hai the uh, the male satisfaction level score score and female and alternate hypothesis means there is uh, not equal there is a significant difference the satisfaction level of male and female employee in private sector but who will decide this p will p will decide so what is the uh, the x uh, female female uh, the score of the female score the 38 the female ka score 38 hai and the male uh, satisfaction level score mean score 47 whether this difference significant or not who will tell us this p value and here p value less than so we reject and we accept this alternate hypothesis because this difference p value less than 0.05 so there is a significant difference now we can conclude that the uh, females are less satisfied ye kewal hypothetical hai aisa na soche जो टीचर फीमेल की कम सेटिस्फाइड है ये ये तो इंडिविजुअल एटीट्यूड के ऊपर भी डिपेंड करता है अब देखिए नाउ क्वेश्चन इज हाउ टू इंटरप्रेट द रिजल्ट ऑफ देन द इंटरप्रेशन एंड रिपोर्टिंग द रिजल्ट ये देखिए मैं रिपोर्ट भी कर रहा हूं इसको ये देखिए रिपोर्टिंग द रिजल्ट Yeah, yes an independent t uh, t test was conducted to compare the job satisfaction of male and female employee in private sector there was a significant difference satisfaction level of male and female theek hai na these results suggest that job satisfaction of male employee significantly greater than female employee in private sector specifically our result shows that gender discrimination prevails in private sector ye kewal ek hypothetical study now the next is the next case study pair t test paired t test so in this pair t test case study so the purpose of pair t test to compare before and after uh, the observe uh, the same respondent so in a independent t test in independent t test we compare two groups uh, the independent t test we compare two group mutually exclusive the female participants and male participants if i conduct a test on research methodology whether female participants uh, obtain more marks or uh, male then i can uh, apply independent if i compare the two group independent t test paired t test basically when uh, paired t test paired t test when we uh, compare uh, or the we observe two times means it's a faculty development program okay f d p faculty development program so before faculty development program your awareness regarding the research and after the faculty development program if i conduct test two times before joining uh, the for example there are 500 participants so before joining your uh, score on research methodology uh, the 57 53 61 this in after joining the score your awareness level increase like uh, 62 73 so it is experiment so basically 
I am uh, uh, observing two times same respondent. So this is a big difference. Paired means it's a pair of one person. So before treatment and after treatment, so I use the, uh, the pair t-test. Independent t-test, respondent are different in two categories, but here respondent are same in pair t-test. So the, in this case study, uh, the, a university arranged the faculty development program, uh, the faculty development program uh, on research methodology for one segment, one segment and uh, the one segment uh, the university wants to uh, measure the awareness level of uh, research methodology teacher after the faculty development program. Ki kya usse faculty development program se whether the awareness uh, increase or not. Hai na? So, ye isme hum, uh, isko kaise so we will uh, check the uh, significance, uh, whether the difference is significance or not. So here you can see the, uh, the data. Before faculty development, the score 27, after 35. Theek hai, isko maan lije 500, 50 out of 50, is score hai. Before 29, 39, 21, 40. And the difference before and after 7, 10, ye difference, whether this difference significant or not, we check through the pair t-test. But because it is parametric test, so we will check the normality of the data. We will not check the normality of the before and after observation. We will check normality of the difference data. This difference, the difference says we will check normality, whether this difference significant or not. So I will perform it. How file is the file? The very file. <coughs> I'm a file ko ye show kar raha hu. I am import data set from this uh, independent t test pair t test ki file second pair t test. ये आ गया फाइल यस देखिए ये मेरे पास फाइल आ गया ओपन ओके नाउ आई एम कन्वर्टिंग माय डेटा फाइल क्योंकि बड़ी फाइल है माय डेटा देन इसको मैंने किया x23 अंडरस्कोर और इसके बाद ये मेरी फाइल आ गई नाउ आई कैन सी द बॉक्स प्लॉट आल्सो box plot box plot and uh, my data my data box uh, the before and my data after okay a color scheme they said they have school any color scheme uh, c o l C O L equal to C uh, and within bracket is me uh, five six five comma six ticket yeah the color scheme did yeah and then check the box plot you did the difference are yeah before using the uh, before applying the faculty development program the hamne jab faculty development program se pehle the mean score was 25 and after the faculty development program it increased almost 32 or something so there is a difference but whether this difference significant or not but we will check first normality lily test and then my data my data so we should keep in mind we check normality of the difference the difference of after and before so my data now you can see the p value it is greater than 0 0.05 so data normally distributed so there is no problem now i am applying the whether this uh, difference significant or not impact of a kidney development program or not so my data my data dollar sign my data dollar sign before my data uh, my data dollar sign after comma method method 
method equal to c and bracket person and then the, 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 the person with bracket me lena tha yes bracket equal to c uh, bracket or ye bhi a gaya yaha mera double bracket ye ek minute yes ye dekhi now the the score uh, the p value it is very less uh, 3.018 e to the power minus 0 0.05 it is very very less almost 0, 0.0 okay so the t value at point minus 0 0.505 and degree of freedom this so the, there are two mean before faculty development program 24.6 and after faculty development program awareness increased 30 points so the so we can interpret that there is a significant impact of faculty development program to enhance the uh, knowledge of the apartment or awareness uh, next is the uh, analysis of variance. Uh, next, uh, ANOVA. ANOVA simply, uh, ANOVA basically it is uh, more or less same as the independent t test. But in ANOVA, when we compare more than two groups, we use in an independent t test, we compare only two groups independent independent uh, t test it's a limitation of independent t test we cannot compare more than two groups but if we want to compare more than two groups we use anova anova basically extension of independent t test here we are comparing three levels four levels is tarike se hum more than uh, two or three levels four levels we can compare so i am opening the data set of uh, the independent t test ka data set mein open kar raha hu mm, import data set so main import data set of anova mm, desktop nal gotias mm, anova and then store promotion ye dekhiye ye data set aa gaya so in this case study, we want to know whether discount increase sales or not. So I am converting my data because data file badi hai. So x24 underscore this is store promotion and then my data uh, ab data ki normality and homogeneity hum check karenge. First of all, I am uh, chaliye. Isse pehle graph bhi bana dete hain. Box plot box plot through box plot we can check whether in a three group discriminant uh, wo, jo alag -alag hai ya nahi hai. so my data uh, dollar sign the sales difference uh, my data then dollar sign promotion there are three categories in promotion no promotion medium promotion and high promotion so color equal to main le raha hu yahan pe 3 4 5 so you can take uh, the 3 comma 4 comma 5 and then enter uh, after enter ye dekhi graph aa gaya so when uh, the, 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 the there is no promotion the mean sale is almost 2000 something when we give 10% discount then sale increase almost 3000 and when we give 30% discount so sale is 5000 so there is a significant difference but whether it is significant or not we will uh, check it uh, through the analysis of variance so and normality am find norm whether data normal or homogeneous hai ya nahi for normality shapiro test for checking the normality Shapiro test, my data, dollar sign, my data, uh, dollar sign, or yes, sales, and then data normally distributed. Yes, p value greater than 0 0.05. So, data normally distributed, second assumptions whether data homogeneous or not. So, we use Bartlett test of to check the normality of the 
my data dollar sign sales comma my data my data dollar sign and promotion comma center equal to mean mean and then enter and after ek minute ye isko hataiye do bracket zyada aa gaye sorry ye theek enter yes now the data not oh sorry data homogeneous because p value greater than 0.05 theek hai ab to ye to aa gaya ab isme fir anova lagana hame anova mein kya karenge write down model model and uh, the uh, convert a o a o v within bracket sales and difference uh, sorry ek minute promotion 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 comma my data my data dollar sign promotion <coughs> and uh, sorry ye maine galat likh diya uh, sales promotion aa gaya na my data to wo data equal to my data yes uh data what is the file name of my data my data ye my data mera iska file name hai aur isko enter ab likhiye anova a n o anova script of anova anova and within bracket model then model now you can get the output ye dekhiye यहाँ पे जो पी वैल्यू है दिस इज दी वैल्यू सिग्निफिकेंट बिकॉज पी वैल्यू पॉइंट जीरो लेस देन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव तो देर इज ए सिग्निफिकेंट इम्पैक्ट बट अब सिग्निफिकेंट इम्पैक्ट है बट वी डू नॉट नो वेदर लो लो डिस्काउंट ऑल्सो सिग्निफिकेंटली इंक्रीजिंग दी सेल और नॉट और हाई सो वी यूज पॉस्ट ऑफ एनालिसिस टेस्ट for post token analysis test we use there are 18 test so i am taking taki t u k e y taki h s d and then model and then after model the uh, yes there is a now you can check whether significant difference or not so here we find a low promotion with high promotion no significant because p value this for no promotion with high promotion p value less than 0.05 and no promotion with low promotion p value greater than this so we can say the significant increase when we do high promotion high promotion karne se significantly increase ho raha hai ye dekhiye ye wala तो तीन पेयर बने ऐसे ये देखिए नो प्रमोशन जैसे यहां ना वाई इक्वल टू एक्स नो प्रमोशन एंड लो प्रमोशन एंड हाई प्रमोशन वन पेयर वी चेक पॉस्टो एनालिसिस ऑफ दिस इट इज नॉट सिग्निफिकेंट बिकॉज पी वैल्यू ग्रेटर देन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव द सेकेंड पेयर नो प्रमोशन विद हाई जब इसको कंपेयर कर रहे हैं क्या हाई प्रमोशन से सिग्निफिकेंट होता है यस यहाँ पे देखिए ना इट्स यहाँ पे पॉइंट जीरो टू जीरो यहाँ पे हाई सिग्निफिकेंट आ रहा है ठीक है तो इस तरीके से नाउ क्वेश्चन इज हाउ टू रिपोर्ट द रिजल्ट ऑफ द एनालिसिस ऑफ वेरियंस इसके कैसे हमें रिजल्ट्स को शो करना है वो मैं बता देता हूँ कैसे प्रेजेंट करें हम अपने रिजल्ट को रिपोर्ट इन रिसर्च पेपर के स्टडी दिस now you can see the case study of analysis of variance the reporting the result yes no promotion high promotion dekhi is tarike se ye results hain aur reporting kis tarah se karni hai hame ye karna there was a statistically significant difference between groups as demonstrated by one way anova this p value taki postok test showed that no promotion and high promotion group is statistically significant because p value less than 0.05 there was no statistically significant difference between no promotion and low promotion because p value greater than 0.05 okay 
थैंक यू वेरी मच आज के लिए इतना ही रखेंगे कल फिर नॉन पैरामेट्रिक और जो हमारे रिग्रेशन वाला है वो स्टार्ट करते हैं Thank you so much, sir, for uh, this informative and valuable session on R. Honestly speaking, I am just a beginner. Even I was learning with your session, and uh, and now I can say that I have uh, what I have observed uh, with this R uh, module or R software that it is purely command based software. बस बिल्कुल बिल्कुल. Yes, sir. So. इसमें इसमें कुछ नहीं है केवल देखिए कोई भी टेस्ट लगाना इवन आपको एक्सप्लोरेटरी फैक्टर एनालिसिस क्लस्टर एनालिसिस यू जस्ट राइट डाउन दी स्क्रिप्ट एंड देन हाँ कमांड बेस्ड है सिंटेक्स बेस्ड है और आपके पास आउटपुट आ जाएगा तो सबसे हाँ तो इसमें कोई हार्ड नहीं है ये जो है आर स्टूडियो और फ्रीली अवेलेबल है इसमें आपको ना एसपेसिस की जरूरत पड़ेगी ना कोई दूसरे सॉफ्ट डिस्प्ले होते हैं जिसमें से हम इन बिटवीन अपना रिजल्ट चेक कर सकते हैं सर मैं वही देखना चाह रही हूँ देख लीजिए अगर उनका क्वेश्चन है तो ठीक है हाँ। अच्छा पार्टिसिपेंट्स को आ, मैं एक चलिए कल मैं अपना ना इनको मोबाइल नंबर और ईमेल आईडी भी दे दूंगा इनको अगर फ्यूचर में क्योंकि देखिए ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम में इतना टाइम नहीं होता कि हम एक इंडिविजुअल की प्रॉब्लम को कर सके है ना एग्जैक्टली exactly, सर हाँ तो सुबह में उनको अपना जो कॉन्टेक्ट नंबर और ई मेल वो भी शेयर कर दूंगा सर uh, मैं जैसे अभी देख रही हूँ कि uh, जो पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं उनके कमेंट्स आ रहे हैं वेरी यूजफुल सेशन वंडरफुल सेशन इन्फॉर्मेशन सेशन इन्फॉर्मेटिव सेशन एंड ब्यूटीफुली एक्सप्लेन ये सारे लिखे हैं बट आई थिंक एवरीबडी एवरी वन ऑफ अस इंक्लूडिंग मी टू थोड़ा सा टाइम चाहिए कि हम इस पर थोड़ा प्रैक्टिस uh, करें उसके बाद हाँ उसके बाद अगर कुछ फॉल्ट uh, आते हैं ऑब्वियसली मेरे जैसे बिगिनर को आएगा कि अगर उसके बाद कुछ टेक्निकल इश्यूज आते हैं या कुछ एरर्स आते हैं वो हम आपसे डिस्कस कर सकते हैं बिल्कुल बिल्कुल तो सर आई थिंक हम प्रैक्टिस सेशन जैसा आप अलाउ करें प्रैक्टिस सेशन हम सुबह के लिए कर लें कल वाली क्लास के साथ अगर आप साथ साथ कर सकते हैं देखिए मैंने शेयर कर दिया है सारी फाइल ठीक है ना अगर आप चाहते हैं प्रैक्टिस सेशन साथ साथ करना तो साथ साथ कर सकते हैं पार्टिसिपेंट्स सर uh, एक एक पार्टिसिपेंट का एक क्वेश्चन है इज देर एनी बुक फॉर प्रैक्टिस हाँ यस मैंने टू बुक्स शेयर की है मैडम आपके साथ ओके okay. आप आपको मैंने टू बुक्स शेयर की है आर की उसमें बेसिक फंडामेंटल इसमें दिया हुआ है सीखने के लिए कि हाउ टू लर्न दी आर फ्रॉम मतलब बिल्कुल जीरो से कैसे हमें सीखना वो बुक मैंने शेयर जी जी तो वो हम पार्टिसिपेंट्स के साथ हम वो लेटर ऑन links for how to download and install the r software and that was provided by sir so then again uh, we will be each each one of us will be getting the materials the study materials or book information everything that uh, sir has provided to us you all will be getting definitely for that so uh, sir uh, as you said that tomorrow we will be uh, having a practice session so that uh, so that we can work upon that now uh, on behalf of or now we fdp organizing committee would like to take leave from all the participants present participants with us and uh, with this sentence that we will meet here again for further sessions uh, for the knowledgeable sessions with sir tomorrow at the say uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock and till then i can say just take care be safe and be happy thank you thank you madam thank you Thank you sir thank you thank very you. much thank, thank you person. so much sir thank you thank you so let us disperse and we will meet tomorrow at 10 o'clock all right 10:30 till then bye bye